mais respire. Welcome to Kia and Bordino Akali. Oh, look at that oh, yeah. Wow. Off the top. Welcome, 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 friends, family, free ride fans. The free ride world tour 2021 is off. We are in Ordino Arcalis in beautiful Andorra. My name is Derek Foos. I am here with former free ride world tour rider and powder aficionado, Kiwi Austrian transplant, Neil William. And Neil, what a journey it's been to get to this place. What a journey from almost bringing you Verbier in March last year to bringing you Andorra now. Wow, the emotions that have gone through us and all of the riders since that time, it is great to be here. Well, the Principality of Andorra is an absolutely gorgeous spot. It sits high in the Andorran Pyrenees and it's got a rich history both for skiing and just in life, founded in the early 1200s, sits perfectly between France and Spain, just nestled up high in the Pyrenees. Easy to access from Barcelona and Toulouse, not hard to get here, definitely hard to leave. Skiing is a mainstay in Andorra, and it's become a mainstay on the Freeride World Tour. The resort of Ordino Arcalis offering so many options for the riders. Absolutely loving it. Everyone who comes here, when they go, they cannot wait to come back. This place grabs onto your heart and just holds on. Yeah, that's right. It has become a mainstay on the Freeride World Tour now. It has been hosting competitions here for, for many years. And before that, it had four stars and it still has juniors. And this face we're using today is one that was a four star on the Freeride World Qualifying Circuit before it became a World Tour stop and one that I actually competed on myself. So looking forward to seeing the riders throw it down on it. It's a, it's a new one. Uh, coming up today, we've got the ski woman, ski men, the snowboard woman, and then the snowboard men coming at you on this new face. Ski women dropping first. We are very excited to see this field get after it. The, uh, the ladies are excited. We've got some rookies. We've got some veterans. We've got tour champions uh, in all categories. So, uh, and, and, you know, being on this face, pretty exciting. It's a new one. The conditions have been up and down. We've had some heat. We've had some wind. We've had everything. But the face is looking good. You know, we watched a couple of people ski it. We watched the guides check it out. I think we're in for a show today. Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited to see how the riders throw down since I've had this uh, resource to look at from the last few years of people competing on it in junior competitions and four stars, but this is the world tour. You know, this is the big show where they try and do some of the same lines that people have done in the past, where they look for new ears that people haven't done before. You know, will they stick to their, their safer runs to try and get some points in the bag at the start of the season, or are they going to try and uh, get a title But from the start. Well, there's only one way to find out. Let's take a look at the ins and outs of this face. This, you know, there's a lot going on on here on the Port del Rat. Run us through it, Neil. What's going on up there? Well, we've got two different starts just next to each other. It looks like they take you to different places. Uh, this far look is right and the far look is left are accessible from those two different starts at 26 and 26, 22. 305 meters, so not the longest venue we've had, but it's a quick one. You can really blast off some of those features and it's a northeast aspect with a quite a steep 45 degree average angle. So shutting down speed to make sure you can hit features in between is going to be pretty important, I think, Derek. Yeah, absolutely. Technique's going to come into play here. The, uh, the athletes definitely going to need to use their resources, their deep bag of tricks in order to keep things going. You said short, but tons of action. It's, it's the compressed nature of this venue means even though it's short, you can really fill it with features, which is what the judges want. You know, line score, line score, line score. You got to do a lot to impress them because they're not an easy group of people to impress. Yeah, exactly. They're used to seeing some pretty rad stuff go down. And just like you say, I think linking features is going to be crux here because the landing angle for one might be the takeoff angle for another one. And with this, this pretty fast snow today, it's very stompable, but it's also quite fast. It means that you're going to have to be super on it between your features and not accidentally blast past something that you wanted to hit. Yeah, that's one of the critical things with the athletes taking the time to do the face check and visual inspection in particular. You need to figure out not just which features you want to hit, but how you're going to link them together. The shape of your turns, the speed you need to be going. Because what the judges really want to see from the, from the riders is not scrubbing speed, dumping speed, trying to shed it off, but controlling their speed using the shape of their turns. And in the compressed nature of the venue, and as you said, Neil, the fast, fast snow running today, that's going to be absolutely critical for them to be able to, uh, to do their best and to put on what we want to see here at the Freeride free World Tour, which is a show. 
That's right. We've got a forerunner coming up soon in this live show to demonstrate what the snow is like for you at home and for those athletes. Uh, just a quick side note before we get into that, uh, we are doing our best to keep everything as corona safe as we possibly can here on the Free World Tour. As you can probably see, we are wearing masks and sticking to bubbles. And uh, the only time the athletes are not wearing masks is when they're just about to drop, like this guy, Max Palm in the start gate right now about to show us what the snow is like in what the venue. What a moment for Max Palm. This guy is a current junior rider. You imagine being a junior rider on the junior tour and you get the call up to come and forerun the free ride world tour, but not just the free ride world tour, the first stop after a shutdown year. Max Palm, peak performance rider, dropping in. So excited to see this kid and see where, where things go for him. Absolutely, taking the same start gate as when I foreran yesterday, but getting straight into the NAR, steep, gnarly terrain in there and just working his way through it super quickly beautiful jump turns and sending an air as well stomping it like it nothing what a forerun so far yeah max Paul maybe didn't get the memo that a forerunner is not actually in the competition he's putting down his dream line here max actually won a uh, an event on this face in the past so he knows exactly where he's going if you don't follow this young man on instagram search him up it is always worth a watch he is making he, you know what he's doing right now he's making the riders feel great yeah yeah this bottom here i think it's gonna be a popular one today showing us how the landing is going to be and it looks good the run out a little bit hit, sketchy though and a backflip <laughs> off of the bottom wind lip wow just like you said Jarek, i think he didn't get the memo but it was pretty damn fun to watch i mean that's what you get when you let a junior do the forerun is you get a show because juniors are the frothiest of all the free riders and that was an unreal forerun there for Max Palm. Great to see. He's so psyched to be out here. You know, he was honored to be uh, to be brought on as a forerunner, and he certainly lived up to the task. Wowza. <laughs> Max Palm in the finish line now. About to give us an interview and tell us what it was like, but let's see a quick replay first. Beautiful technique from this young man, just making it look easy up in there. Yeah, I mean, we said it before, but this is going to be really, really positive uh, and sort of positive reinforcement for the riders standing up the top. Everyone was a little concerned that we had had some hot weather and now it was a little cool. But Max showed everybody that you can absolutely get after it right now. The conditions are totally fine. Let's check in with Max. Max Palm, welcome to the Free Ride World Tour. You just did your first four run of what I'm sure is going to be many tour runs. Tell us a little bit about the snow conditions up there. Uh, at the top was like super soft and super good. But then uh, when you get down, uh, it, it has uh, been hit by the sun, so it was way harder, but still pretty good and super fun. Yeah, nice one, Max. Uh, you've won a competition here in Andorra before. How would you compare the snow conditions now to how you rode in then? Uh, they, they were pretty similar, I think. Okay, cool. Thanks for that, man. So you were ready to shred? then and now and you're ready for the riders to shred too thanks for your feedback and we're looking forward to having you hopefully on the free ride world tour sometime again in the future all right so one of the most important things for our riders here is to know where they're going the the way they get that done is face check visual inspection we got to have a little look behind the scenes at how that process works for our riders on the tour Give me a five on the way back. Yeah. We are going to have two foreigners. Three, two, one, drop in. The snow is a little bit firm and punchy, but like pretty predictable, so you know what you're gonna get. If you're riding early, go look his left. If you're riding late, go look his right. Be nice and soft. Hopefully get some spring slush coming at you. Uh, you know, it's a little cooler today, but I'm excited to be on a new face. I think that's gonna be a really fun thing for all the competitors and for myself as well. Um, I'm really loving to see everyone, even if we have to keep distance, but it's just back to, good to be back with the fam. I mean, I look forward to compete, but we'll see, I mean, if we are not blowing off the mountain, we're giving our best. <laughs> ah, 
uh, Neil, you were forerunning yesterday, giving the riders that vital information on what the snow was like, how things were running, what the terrain was all about. How was that experience for you? I think it was quite similar to the one that Max Pan had just then. Up the top, the snow is good on the sunny part and a little bit firm on the shadier part where it's been wind affected. Down lower, you had that little bit of a sun crust where things are angled a little bit more to the east. And uh, coming out the very bottom, the snow is not so bad for shutting down speed. So uh, it was a lot windier yesterday as well. And so yesterday we were dealing with like the immediate effects of the wind. And now it's like a little bit kind of stabilized and the sun is, is melting anywhere that had a bit of a wind crust. Uh, so yeah, I had a good time. Uh, surprised how good the snow was. It's better than it looked from the bottom. And I think that part of the reason for that is that crazy Saharan sandstorm that we had, parts of which are now exposed. So you can see a bit of, a bit of sand in the snow there, but that's not rocks, just to let, let you know. All right, well, first category up today is going to be our ski women. It's a brand new field. We're ready to go. Let's have a look at where the ski women are going to be at. ski field just absolutely going off right now the difference in the last couple of years how things have just stepped up has been amazing to see and it doesn't show any signs of slowing down right now so many heavy hitters in this field today Derek. let's see who we're looking at right off the bat we are looking at Zuzana Vitish. this got to be terrifying to be a rookie first on the day first run on the free ride tour world tour ever but she's right well she's that blend of terrified and stoked which is i think perfect elizabeth gerritsen she's a proven veteran mode best so excited to see her back in the mix she was a true contender a big threat and then lost her acl she's lost a year to it she's back tracy chubb she was the reason uh, region two fwq champ she's a rookie on the tour we'll see what she's got for us yeah that's right juliet wilman the only french rider in the women's ski field today followed up by other big heavy hitters like hedwig vessel looking to take her first title this year she's been aiming for that really hard recently and olivia mcneil the wild card out of North America due to the injury to Jacqueline Pollard. Really sorry to see that. Unfortunately, Ariana Shikomi not able to make it today, but should be back with us for Fever Brun. Yeah, lots of interesting little side stories there in the women's ski field. Like you said, we've lost a few. Uh, we've lost a few riders. Unfortunately, not. We're, we're not seeing Jess Hodder here, who is always a fan favorite to see absolutely fly down any of these faces. Jacqueline Pollard is out, but I'm pretty excited to see Olivia McNeil. She is fresh out of juniors. She did a half a season before things shut down on the FWQ. Did finish second overall, so she was the natural wild card when we lost Jacqueline Pollard. Uh, pretty exciting to see her and very exciting for her, I'll tell you what. All right, fun so, bet. Yeah, the fun bet, if you don't know about this already, look it up on the website, but just to sum it up really quickly, here is a percentage summation of the people that have voted for these people in terms of how they think the podium's gonna end up. So 90% of people that have done the peak performance fun bet think that Hedwig Guess will be on the podium today, 72% think Elizabeth Gerritsen, and 31% think Juliet Willman. So Hedwig Vessel, in the absence of Ariana Tricomi, a strong favorite today, Derek. Yeah, and if you haven't done your fun bet, your peak performance fun bet, uh, for this event. It is closed. The event has started. We are running, but we're going to be running more events this year, and you got to get on there because the prizes from Peak Performance are insane on the fun bet. Uh, we're at the start gate. Freeride World Tour comp number one. Ordino Arkeles, our first athlete in the gate. Neil, I, I mentioned it before, but Susanna Vitic, she's a Polish rider. She's living in Switzerland. She speaks fluent French. Um, she's making the rest of us look like idiots with her with her CV of just <laughs> languages and, and obviously the skill here. But 
you've been a rookie on the tour. How is she feeling right now having to drop first, first, first? First, 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 first Polish rider on the world tour, first out of the gate on the first competition of the year. Yeah, I saw her physically displaying signs of nervousness over the last three days, only just got to know her, went from smiling, happy and bubbly to still that, but just this look in her eyes of just so much concentration going into this one moment. What's going to go down over the next two minutes has been basically all she's been thinking about for the last three days, and it can really make or break your mind game for the rest of the season. It shouldn't, and it doesn't have to, but it can. You've been looking forward to this moment so much, focusing on it so much through all the qualifiers you've done and, and the getting here and the, the travel's been difficult enough and like standing at the top of this venue and you don't want to be having GoPro problems, for example. That's not really what she's uh, looking for right now. But yeah, she'll be excited and nervous and one of the most memorable moments of her life, I think. Yeah, and speaking of the mental game, I mean, clearly Zuza has demonstrated that she's got it. She was the, the winner of the Region 1 Freeride qual World Qualifier last year. So the skills are there, the mental game is there, but now you step onto the big stage, you've got the heli in your face, you've got the world watching, you're in that start gate, that Ordino Arcoli start gate, all branded up, look at Freeride World Tour. Uh, yeah, it's a weird combo of terrified and so excited. And for Zuza, she is ready. She's such a good skier. If you're, uh, you know, if you've watched her compete before, you know she's got the skills. And I think this face is going to suit her. Yeah, it is tough to battle your way through the FWQ right now. I mean, it always is, but. But especially at the moment, the level is just getting higher and higher. You've got the juniors that are like coming through onto the FWQ from the FJT every single year, and that makes it even tougher. So uh, competing in Switzerland or based out of Switzerland and during the European comps, uh, this Polish rider has, has proven that she deserves to be here. And I'm really looking forward to what she has to offer today to open up the Freeride World Tour 2021. Yeah, it was great to have a chat with her yesterday about her line selection. She was pretty excited. All right, we are underway. FWT 21 is on, and Zuza Vitic is on course. Starting it off with a nice air off that wind blip, confident coming into that harder snow, so obviously backing her skills to be able to shut down speed in an area that doesn't necessarily have forgiving snow. Another air off that wind blip, coming fast gears right into the rocky zone. Yeah, this is extremely technical. Susanna loves that kind of skiing. She's got the billy goat heading right into the guts of it. And we are on now, Neil. She's kind of making her way through, looking for the zones where the snow is going to be a bit softer. Now right into it. Oh, Neil, well, this is a great way to get the tour started this year. Absolutely. Really smart skiing, staying in the good, softer snow that you can you can see with your eyes quite easily that the harder snow that you don't leave a track like the Forerunner and then the softer snow that Susanna is managing to stick into. Zuza coming down to the bottom section now. These are where the bigger cliffs are. What we're going to see from the competitor stomping that one and coming out hot. She's starting to feel good now. She's starting to think, I've put down my first wheel to a run. I'm going to get to the bottom on my feet. Another little side hit there. I think she was hoping to take that off the nose, but getting another one and down the bottom, linking the features together just like we talked about and she is done she is coming to the finish line that euphoria of relief and excitement is going to be washing over her as the heli follows her into the finish corral Zuzana Vitek Zuza in the finish line with a smile on her face big ups to the new Polish rider rookie yeah that was awesome look at that smile I can only imagine how good it's it's almost infectious that good feeling you put down a run like that, we're all feeling it. We're feeling it in the booth. Everyone on the on the crew is feeling it. Look at that, right off the bat, nice shift. You're getting things started. That kind of stuff can really shake off the rust for you. You know, competition season, you're kind of feeling a little tight, and then boom, you get that shifty out of the way. Looking like she got a little hung up on some rocks there. Look at this, the way she's standing over that downhill ski, Neil. I wondered when people came out of the bottom if they were going to get uh, caught up by the ice. We saw it with our first forerunner uh, who was off the air before Max, but no problem. This, these are tour riders, and they ride like tour riders. That's right. It was a super nice run to get things going, and we're so psyched the World Tour is happening again. If there's anything I think the judges will penalize her for is that it was a little bit traversy between some of the speech features, especially at the top. I think that she lost more speed than she wanted to. That, that snow was fast, and there were some rocks that had to be avoided. Didn't manage to come off things off completely off the nose, which is what I'm sure she wanted to do. So score coming in, and... 63-3-3. So the judges giving themselves a little bit of space to work with. These numbers are, uh, you know, they use them based on their criteria, also on the ranking system. So Susanna right now, she's sitting in first, and we'll see if it holds up. As you said, that lower start, it does offer a bit of traverse at the at the top, but it is getting getting you somewhere, and, and you know, within the criteria that the judges have to work with, they know what they're looking at. The riders also know what the judges are looking at, so they're choosing runs that they feel are going to give them, uh, you know, the best option to ramp the score up. Now, uh, you know, we go right back up to the top, and we have one of the heaviest hitters in the game, Elizabeth Gerritsen. She is a Burbier Extreme 
champion. She's a young Swiss rider with a ton of style. She's, a, in my opinion, an awesome combination of serious and hilarious. I love that about her. She's super focused as an athlete, but as a person, she's so fun to be around, super interesting. But man, when she gets into the Stargate, look out. Yeah, that's right. Verbier champion from, from two years ago, so currently holding the Verbier title actually since last year, unfortunately got canceled at her home mountain. Back in the start gate now and pushing off Elizabeth. the peak performance rider. Taking the same line as Zuza so far. Another shifty off that ridge and another competitor that's managed to stay in that nice softer snow on the further lookers right. Taking a similar line to Zuza so far. I thought we'd see more skiers on the lookers left at the top, but uh, creative ears that I didn't pick myself coming off that bigger hit and taking it far more full line, stomping it from Elizabeth Gerritsen, but coming unstuck in that snow, that harder snow that we could see and we talked about before, didn't quite manage to stay out of it and has lost both her skis and all of her points, very unfortunately. Right off the nose, the stomp was no problem for Elizabeth, but unfortunately controlling the speed after proving to be the challenge. So she's waving her arms, she's okay, but she is extremely disappointed as up to that point, things were looking great. Super fast, super fluid, and for sure, I know we're only two riders in, but far and away the biggest air of the event so far, taking off a huge bite of that. And yeah, really handling the landing, but speed control, we kind of talked about it. Let's have a look, Neil, and analyze this. Yes, yeah, stomp in the soft, oh no, oh. the ski just blows off. Okay, so not necessarily the fault of the, the transition from the softest snow to the hardest snow that we had thought. I mean, it was in that area that it happened, but it looks like it might have been just catching a, a foot in the crust, one foot diving, one foot not, maybe even a binding problem, that unfortunate and unlikely and uncommon, but it could be that. Sometimes it happens. I'm not sure exactly what happened there, but it could be a punchy crust that she landed and one foot broke through. What do you yeah, think? Yeah, that's a nightmare for, for a tour athlete to have their ski come off after you've stomped a big air like that. Uh, you know, obviously we'll have to catch up with her later and find out the specifics of it, but looking like she had it stomped and then on the run out, just walking out of that right ski and unfortunately, um, I don't care how good you are, you're not finishing a tour run on one foot. You know what, and, and did, somebody's going like to make it. me eat my words, somebody's going to make <laughs> me eat my words and do it. These are the most talented athletes on the planet. Um, but that is extremely upsetting for Elizabeth as things were starting off with a bang. I'm glad that she's okay. I think right now for her it's going to be the spirit that's feeling a little bit down. Hopefully physically she's, she's good there. But man, what a bummer for Elizabeth starting things off so strong and then uh, Unfortunately, going down in the guts of it now, just waiting for a ski runner to come and get her equipment for her. We do have a um, basically a massive crew of support here, both medical, ski runners, uh, setup riders, all kinds of stuff. We've got we, these riders are backed up to the nth degree just to make sure everything's safe and things are are, uh, are clean for them. That's right. So Elizabeth is starting to hike for a ski there. Uh, that other ski is quite far above her, so we've got a ski ninja, a ski dude, or a ski dudette coming in to help her out and retrieve that other ski for her. She's already made her way to the first one, and the, the second one will be retrieved for her soon, hopefully. Uh, waving her arms both uh, to show us that she is okay and out of frustration, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, pretty, pretty frustrating way to start the tour season after missing out on Verbier last year, as everyone did. You know, the competition got cancelled, even though the, the venue was in just prime condition. So I think a lot of the athletes have just been absolutely frothing to get back into the competition scene and ensure what they've got and she sure did coming out of the gate huge air stomping it losing that ski almost riding it out on one foot and instead having to wait for for someone to come and get her ski which is quite far above her so neil we've we've chatted about this but i want to talk about it again we don't know who's got what right now because it's been such a long time since we've seen a competition. Fever Brune 2020 was the last time we saw these athletes in competition. So it, this is really the time for a lot of riders to lay their cards on the table. I'm wondering, up at the top, everybody just saw Elizabeth absolutely throw down. Do you think that people are going to be changing? Do you think that people are going to be reevaluating? Uh, you know, what do you think is going through the rest of the ski women um, up there after watching Elise? You know, she, she kind of put some heavy cards on the table. She put some aces down. Didn't quite, uh, didn't quite pan out. But man, I, I feel like she made a solid statement there. A very strong statement. Yeah, that's right. She, she's really stepped up <laughs> to a big cliff straight out of the gate on the first competition of the season. She's looking for the win. She wants an overall title. She has the, the skill and the ability to do it. And uh, I think that if you're standing in the start gate and you saw those first two runs, then it wouldn't really necessarily help with your decision making because uh, Zuza skied 
a little bit of a safe line, I would say, you know, which is fair enough as a rookie in your first comp with the unpredictable conditions. And uh, she's, you know, come down, she's got a score in the low 60s that, you know, probably enough for a top five, which, you know, not bad for your first comp. Elizabeth, she's come out there to be like, I'm here to win this thing, you know, or at least podium. And with a run like that, if she kept going the way she was, then she would have. So if you're standing in the start gate, you still don't really know because you've seen someone like, throw their cards down and be like i'm gonna win or crash and crash <laughs> and someone not throw their cards down and be like i'm here to like get my, a feel for the free wheel tour i'm the first out of the gate in my rookie year so i would i don't think it's helpful the decision making it's just showing you two options <laughs> yeah we we know less than we did before but i'm even more excited and more intrigued um uh, which is great and that's right where i want to be sitting in this booth watching this event so elizabeth garrettson she's getting her uh, equipment back together she's going to ski out her run so for, for the scoring, when you lose your equipment, you're given an NS. That means no score. Uh, you, you go basically to the bottom of the ladder, and uh, you will finish with equal last place points. So that's, that's going to be a heartbreaker for Elizabeth. Uh, but if she's proven anything in her free ride career, it's resiliency. Mm. She can come back. She knows how to do it. She's, um, you know, she's... She's a smart rider, and she's extremely talented as a skier. So we're going to see Elizabeth back on the froth, I have no doubt. Absolutely. And maybe she's going to get another chance next week. We are going to try and host another competition here in, in, uh, in Ordino Akalis. Uh, so just coming into the finish line now, the peak performance rider out of Verbier, Switzerland, the reigning Verbier Extreme champion, the style master, Elizabeth Gerritsen, in the finish line now. And, yeah. Uh, not as much of a smile as, as Vizuza. Understandably. Yeah, that's a that's a tough thing to take as an athlete when you you do your bit and um, you know your your your, don't. your equipment doesn't. But it is unfortunately part of the game, and we've seen it we've seen it too many times to to think that it's anything but possible to happen again. And unfortunately, it happening to Elizabeth there. But we move on. The competition goes on. Elizabeth is done for the day, but we are going back up to the start. And this one is fascinating. Mode Best, Verbier rider. She was a rookie on tour two years ago, did two events. In her first event, she was on the podium, and then in her second event, she went absolutely massive and tore her ACL, and she's been out since then. But she has been shredding at a, such a high level at home. I'm super excited. I think Mode Best is a dark horse possibility for a title this year. She's back. She's fully healed. She's totally engaged. Look, she's visualizing her line. I had a quick chat to her yesterday, and she's like, oh, I'm 100%, and I am ready. And I was like, oh, yeah. And Mode she's Best. on course. Uh, first one out of the top start gate, straight into that steep, gnarly zone and making super short work of it really quick. I think this is the, the 50 degree section of the slope up there, which brings the average up to 45 for the whole thing. And you wouldn't know it because she was there th through there so quickly. Some riders were worried about the ability to control speed on that apron under the steeps. Mod having no problem with that, whether that's uh, snow quality or her quality as an athlete. Either way, Mod making short work of this, clean through there. Now she's coming into these lower gullies where we've got a lot of different options. Super interested to see which way Mod is going to choose to go. Popping off that middle nose and coming quickly down through that slightly crustier snow. You can see the stuff that's angled a little bit back towards the sun has got that firm crust on it, but keeping well in control of that and doubling down through that bottom section. Quite a similar line to my forerun from yesterday, I'd say. Boom, 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 dead fall line top to bottom. If you put a ruler in our view from the summit to the finish line, she went absolutely dead straight down the middle of that ruler and she is back, Mode Best back on the tour, super clean, super fast and very technically, uh, technically sound. Really happy to see another rider come through that middle section lower where we saw the forerunner get a little jacked up and manage it by using good technique as a coach. That stokes me right out. Yeah, nice one. We got the judging criteria coming up now, the line and fluidity both in the green, control, air and style and technique all average that would uh, point towards a 50-something score for me. Uh, I think that that'll be something that we'll talk about a little bit later as well. But Maud Bess uh, showing that she can get down on her feet, maybe seeing her Swiss compatriot out of Verbier going down and losing a ski just before her and uh, maybe turning back her line a little bit based on that. What do you think? Hard to say. I mean, for from the, from the uh, mind game perspective for Maud, return to competition can be daunting mentally. Uh, right now, she needs to be better than 63-3-3, which was uh, Zuzu the score so for mod to come back at maybe not a thousand percent 
in terms of difficulty of line, but skiing at what looked like 100% in ski quality, mm. I think that's probably pretty sound strategy for this for, for this first event back. You never exactly know how your mind's going to work. 69-3-3. So Ma dropping herself into the hot seat. You know what I think the judges really liked about that, Neil, was A, the tough start at the yeah. top, and B, the directness of the line. You said it when we watched Zuza. A little traversy mode, none of that. Exactly. I think the the speed of the skiing and the size of the airs was quite similar between Zuza and Maud, but uh, starting from that top start with a steeper top section and skiing it so confidently at well probably made the difference. All right, well, the competition rolls on. Tracy Chubb in the start gate. She was our Region 2 Freeride World Qualifier Champion. She's an American rider. She's a shredder. She's a veteran, 35 years old. She's been at this for a while, but, man, she is so excited. She's like a full froth monster. I was talking to her yesterday. She loves skiing. She's, she's bouncing around the mountain, loving all the little side hits and stuff, skiing with the crew. I'm super stoked to see Tracy get out here. She has a bit of a reputation on the North American scene for some pretty heavy sending, so hoping she's going to get after that here on the Freeride World Tour. Absolutely. I uh, did some comps with Tracy back in the day, some of the four stars in the North American circuit, and awesome to see that after injuries, she has battled her way onto the tour and on course now, starting to that same top here off the wind lift that we saw Zuza and Elizabeth do and coming over maybe to the same cliff. Yeah, it's just so fascinating to see riders who on their own do the visual inspection without really talking to each other and then end up on the same features. Although Tracy taking a slightly different approach. Now you can see this snow is firm. She's not even leaving a track in it. Now getting back over into the softer snow through Elizabeth's bomb hole, taking a slightly lower line. Nice little chip off the side of that. So things looking clean here for Tracy so far. Yeah, that's right. I wonder if you can see the cliff that Elizabeth hit from the top and see the fact that she crashed. And I wonder if that made an effect on her decision making because uh, Tracy, like you said, quite the sender and has a reputation for that in the Freeride qualifying scene in North America, but lining up something at the bottom now, maybe as a double, I think she is. This is a big one, Tracy Chubb, pointing into the shoot, a little bit off the side, but coming out in control on her feet. Nice and clean there for Tracy and heading over to the wind lip. Oh, looking like the uphill foot hit it a bit before the downhill foot, but she managed to handle it. These athletes are, are, are ninjas when it comes to balance and fitness. So a little thing like that, not going to throw her off. So Tracy Chubb, another rookie now, just like Susanna, who is in this finish gate with a clean, complete run. That's got to feel good. Yeah, absolutely. Staying on her feet. I think that she maybe got caught in that crusty snow a little bit on that wind lip. Uh, making it even more impressive that we've seen a trick of that today. Uh, but yeah, like you said, uh, that slightly harder snow where she didn't leave a track and that look of right, look his right hand gully. Uh, I think she is going to be looking at a similar score to Zuzana Vitic, maybe a little bit lower based on that judging criteria of fluidity and air and style being down. Like you said, a little, little bit out of control in that very bottom wind lip here. Uh, even though it's a small thing, it kind of judges uh, affects the judging the criteria and the points because you have to compare people against the other people who have not done that. Waiting big, in the school and sorry. Big smile on her face there, Tracy. She's stoked to be in the finish gate. That's gotta be that's gotta be a great feeling to get that first run on the tour kinda out of the way. I don't want to say out of the way, because you said it before, it's one of the greatest feelings in the world. You want to cherish it. But also to be in the finish and just be done with it, it's gotta feel good. And now you can start to focus on a little bit of strategy. There you go, Neil, you were bang on. 57.33, so just a little bit below Susanna Vidic uh, based on that uh, fluidity and air and style, I believe. Similar line, uh, similar size of jumps, and showing us that there is cool terrain and some good snow in the venue today, but having to be a little bit careful of that harder snow in the middle of the looker's right hand. So sitting uh, third at the moment, I believe, uh, current in podium contention, but we've got three big names coming up. Yeah, there's no guarantees here uh, until all the riders are finished. And this is a young lady who really wants to have a crack at it. She has got incredible technique. French rider Juliette Willemann from Chamonix. She said she's been ski touring a ton because, as we all know, the ski resorts in France are not open. So she, her legs are strong. Juliette's been going uphill a ton, wants to go downhill a little bit. 2020 last year, fourth place in Hakaba. She's got that ski racing background. Uh, I say this every year when Juliet drops in for the first time. I love how she skis. I love to watch Juliet ski. I'm really excited to see this run for her. Yeah, me too. Derek Foose, the coach of the Whistler Freeride Club, speaking as a coach, loves to see good technique, and Juliet Wilman certainly has that. The second rider to start in the steep 
steep top section you can see that it is gnarly up there and she is making sure to get through that without losing control because that would be terrible for her body and her score but stomping an air through there as well we didn't see more best do that the only other rider to go through that section so the first person to drop something in the steep technical start start one on course we've got Juliet Wilman, the only French rider in the women's ski field today Juliet moving into this ultra exposed double airing out super clean you can see when she has to make the turn on the exit, that's where she leans on that technique, standing on the downhill ski. Now, Juliet is way into a great run right now and over top of more. Oh, Juliet, this is a new Juliet Williman. She has, we've, we've seen her ski well, but sometimes choose the mellower line. Well, that Juliet is gone, and this new Juliet is looking absolutely unbeatable. That was unreal. Boom, Juliet Willman. I have been waiting for that kind of run from you, and that was absolutely hammers. That double takes so much commitment. It is directly above big exposure, and you saw how hot she came out of there. Part of her shutdown turn didn't leave a track in the snow. The snow was hard, but that perfect technique allowed her to shut down that snow shut down the speed in that snow just like she needed to do perfect control great technique you can see that all of those green bars are right up for the judging criteria a little bit down on the fluidity for hesitation at the top and the steep gnarly part but i think we're going to be looking at a new hot seat person here today derek foos absolutely that run was such a great blend of good skiing solid line and fluidity and the places where she slowed down you had to slow down you know obviously these riders are concerned for their own safety 78 6 7 for juliet wilman dropping into the hot seat that she just set the bar right there for the women's field that was fantastic i'm so excited for her it's been an evolution for juliet in free riding and and to see her now drop into that to start our hot seat and we got to give a nod to the hot seat this year built out of the uh out of the retro dynastar skis that is just so cool to see juliet step into the uh the arena here and really show us that the uh the women's field is absolutely firing. That's right. So Juliet Willman guaranteed a podium now with two riders left to come. Maud Bess in second, Zuza Vitic in third. Uh, well, the, the rookie's going to be stoked. The returns from injury, the wild cards. Uh, but we have some people coming up that can definitely knock them out of there. Who have we got next on the start list? Well, I tell you what, if there's somebody to be scared of when you're sitting in the hot seat, it's this woman right here. Hedvig Vessel. She won here last year. She's won plenty of events. She was in second overall going into the finals last year when the tour shut down. She is here only to take a title. She's very, she's a happy young lady, but man, she is a savage competitor and she wants it. And she's such a good skier. I love watching Hedvig ski because you never know, are you going to get the freestyle Hedvig or are you going to get the big mountain Nar Hedvig? We're going to find out right now. Big mountain Nar so far, Hedvig Vessel straight out of the gate with pace just coming into that steep and gnarly issue on the look is right. We haven't seen anyone go down there yet, I believe, C continuing even further right into the zone below the start two and teeing off with a huge backflip. Hedvig Vessel blowing my mind. Oh my word. Hedvig Vessel is not messing around. She is here to play, sending it through that gap. That was absolutely wild. And now look at the pace. She is pinning it through this lower section. Hedvig, it was one second ago she did a humongous backflip at the top and her run is almost finished. She's on the apron at the bottom absolutely pinned even a little extra credit there over the step Hedvig Vessel flying well we said if you're in the hot seat you should be afraid Juliet you should probably be afraid because Hedvig Vessel is here to play I am losing my mind about that run that top back he was so committed the snow up there isn't that forgiving uh, not even a steep takeoff not a good poppy takeoff it's almost downhill look at the replay now Boom, perfect landing. Had to shut speed down as well before this next cliff. You can see this rock right there. So confident that she could just take that and then take on the next hit straight away afterwards. This is also above exposure. No hesitation, no worries. Hedvig Vessel, wow, I think we're going to have another new person in the hot seat. I mean, kids, if you're at home and you're a, you're a young free rider, that's how you do it. That is how you do it. Strength, commitment, skill, talent. All of it in, in one package there for Hedvig. That was incredible. Look how happy she is. That's got to feel good yeah, to put pumped. that run down. Yeah. Got to beat Juliet Wilmer to see on yet. The, the one thing I think the judges might penalize her for, she was a little bit out of control coming out of that landing from the backflip. Understandable because the snow was difficult. It's the same snow that made uh, Elizabeth Gerritsen crash. But when that happens above exposure, you can't 
hundred percent reward that you got to say, oh, that was close, but well, boom in the hot the seat. The judges have spoken. Eighty-six, <laughs> six, seven for Hedvig Vessel. We have a new leader. No surprise there. The judges definitely having to uh, having their work cut out for them. But we saw the judging criteria there just lit up top to bottom like a set of traffic lights. Except no red lights on that one. That was all green. Fluidity and, and I mean the line, like every piece of that, like you said, so exposed, so much risk and just taking the risk and handling it like the veteran she is. That was a boss run from Hedwig Vessel. She wants to be the overall champion this year. The peak performance rider out in Norway, making her case for it. She went win, last, win, last, and now she is looking at a win again. She either crashes or wins, and what a way to start off the season and her championship. All right, well, we are looking at the last woman in the women's field. This is our wild card, Olivia McNeil, right out of the Whistler Freeride Club. She was second overall on the FWQ in North America, and she got wild carded when we lost Jacqueline Pollard two weeks ago. She was uh, at home in university, and now she is dropping into her first run on the Freeride World Tour. Also opting for the steep gnarly start and also opting for traversing a little bit to the right, just like we saw Hedvig Vessel do, but dropping into that chute. Steep and gnarly in there, lucky the snow's good. Catching her a little bit on one ski, but popping around very similar to the forearm that we saw from Max Palm so far. Yeah, so far so good here for Olivia. Nerve wracking for her, dropping into the first tour, uh, tour run of her life. Going big there, solid so far for Olivia McNeil. She's uh, looking like she's adjusting her goggles. That landing looked firm. Yeah, super heavy hit, but uh, taking it with the legs and just adjusting your gear to get into the next section. I wonder if that uh, maybe chatter to focus for the next section, but getting for this bottom section, she's got another big one lined up into a steep landing. That's a transfer. You've got to make that landing, and she does. Coming out hot. Oh, looks like that crusty snow costs her a ski just like Elizabeth. Oh, that is such a shame. Right in the belly of the turn, loading it up, and the ski just walked off after that huge air. Olivia showing us that she belongs here, but unfortunately, just digging in there, maybe, I don't know if she wanted to, to shed a bit of speed or if she was looking to get over to, to catch a, a little extra credit air off that pepper, but whatever it was, it just took her ski as she broke through the crust, and that is heartbreaking because things were looking good there for Olivia McNeil. That is absolutely heartbreaking because I think that was going to be a podium run there, Derek. Yeah, I agree. Your junior out of the Whistle Freeride Club, three of them on the Freeride World Tour now. This is the first one that was seen today, and the first girl out of the Whistle Freeride Club to be on the Freeride World Tour. Second, I apologize. Yeah, so let's take a look here. Big one, clean stomp there, heavy head for Liv, and then digging into the turn. She did drop a hip there, and when the hip went down, the ski was off. I hope she's okay. That actually looks a lot rougher uh, on hopefully knees and ankles and everything are all right because that one when it dug in it stopped her ski absolutely dead yeah that crusty snow a little bit uh, of the more angled from the lookers right to the lookers left stuff is, is where it's a bit more sun affected and crusty but uh popping that ski on her way out to what i think would have been a celebration in the finish line and it's still a celebration because of what an amazing run that was especially that transfer air where you had to make that landing and she did really impressed with that that's kind of veteran level stuff and she's doing it as a rookie so awesome to have olivia mcneil here staking her case on the free eyed world tour really sick first run for the rookie unfortunately not quite able to take it all the way to the finish line this time but i'm sure in the future we're going to see some more big stuff from the young gun yeah, unfortunate there for Liv as she uh, she goes down losing a ski. Uh, but I, I think you're right. I think that's a run she can be proud of as a rookie. It's definitely not easy m mentally or physically, but she went for it. She said she didn't want to do a lame run. That's what she told me. <laughs> she was terrified of that. <laughs> yeah, that was her worst fear. Rather rather go down swinging than uh, finish in, in a lame one. So definitely did that, and uh, I, I, I feel like good things or big things are in store for Olivia McNeil. That was a good way to kick things off, minus obviously throwing a shoe. So her and Olivia, or, sorry, her and Elizabeth can co-commiserate together and go back to the drawing board as they're going to look to uh, they're going to look to come back swinging. So here we go, Neil Hedvig Vessel, Juliet Willman, Mode Best. That is your one, two, three ski women here in Ordino Arcalis. Yeah, Cards pretty, are on the table yeah, now. Yeah, they sure are. Wow. And so at Hedrick Gersel, 90% of people thought that the peak performance right out of Norway was going to take it today or at least be on the podium, and they were right. Juliet Willman also taking 30% of the vote for being on the podium, also backing that up. Uh, the other person that people thought were going to be on the podium to join those two was Elizabeth Gerritsen. No score today, losing a ski. And Maud Best with her comeback from injury, like you said, she, see, uh, she said she felt really good, and she has displayed that with the podium on her first comp back.
Exciting stuff there from the ski women's field. Definitely making, uh, there were a lot of questions about the snow conditions, about how the riders were going to handle them. They're definitely difficult. You know, there's some, some changing conditions. As I said, the only, uh, the only consistency is the inconsistency. <laughs> uh, but we now know that it is possible to throw down a pretty badass run on on this face so let's drop down into the finish area this is uh i mean it's the first category to be done hedwig vessel uh wow first of all we would just both like to congratulate you on your win i'd like you to walk us through the process of your inspection face check how did you put that run together with the snow conditions the way they are oh, thank you so much thank you so much well first i was like okay i need to find something that motivates me and that i want to do and I saw that clip, and I was like, okay, I think I could do a backflip there. It's, it's a kick, and I like that. So, oops, sorry. Um, but when it's snow like this, I just thought I don't want to jump too big of cliffs in the end. And then I just wanted to have a pretty straight line. Uh, and I chose the upper, uh, upper start to get a little steeper in the in run and uh, connect that well with the first backflip. So, yeah. Incredible head vague, amazing backflip to see to start off the women's ski for the Freer World Tour 21. We're going to shoot into the men's ski now and see more action, but congratulations again and looking forward to the next stop with you. Thank you so much. All right, so Neil, as you said, ski men are next group on, and let's see, have a little look at where we left off with our ski men. Ski men, well, the ski women gave us a, uh, a look. The ski men, I have a feeling now, after watching that, are not going to be holding back. We're going to see a show from this guy, and it is a stacked field of heavy hitters. Man, I cannot wait to see these guys get after it. Let's have a look at the start list. Anyone on the start list could win today, and I don't think it was like that five years ago, but now it is. Every single person competing could just take the title today. Uh, Tal, Dani, David, Cooper, Tom, they're all super solid uh, out of... Canada and uh, Andorra, Austria and, and Sweden coming from a mixture of veterans now or qualifying through the free ride world qualifiers, Dani being the, the local wild card. Yeah, and then our reigning champion, Isaac Freeland, they're dropping 11th. Can't wait to see what he's got for us. Jan Rouse sees all of these guys. Imar, he is kind of at home here. Definitely the local favorite. Ross Tester, another rookie out of the U.S. And then look at the Swedes stacked up. Wadek Gorek back on the tour. The French rider, man, you know he wants to go, and he can go huge. There are so many things that we can see. So... Peak Performance Fun Bet, if you want to know, if you want to be involved, if you want to go deep, this is the way. And have a look. So you said it before, Neil, this is a percentage of you guys who think that these guys are going to end up on the podium. What do you think of those numbers? Yeah, interested, very interested. Tudel for 59, not that surprised by that. Isaac Freeland, 41. I mean, he's a reigning champion, but he's only in his second year on the tour. Andrew Pollard, 29, rookie of the year in, in previous years. So also a strong contender, but much more spread out than the, than the woman's ski, you know, much more of a, we're not really sure, this is a bit more open, there's more guys. Yeah, definitely a lot of options there. As you said, I mean, it's so hard when you look down that fun bet list and you're trying to decide who you want to put your money on. You can pick three for the podium and there's 19 that makes sense for the podium. So it's really hard to lock in. Looking like uh, Turdell, Freeland, and Apol making the cut there for you guys. If you haven't done your bet, for this event, 
it's too late, you missed out, you blew it, but you can do it again. And we are looking at hopefully running another event here in Ordino Arcalis while we have the snow, while we have all the athletes here, while we have the crew here. So we're going to keep you guys posted, keep you updated on what's going on there. We will, uh, if you stay tuned to all our social channels on the Instagram, Facebook and everything, we'll, uh, we'll let you know. But your, your fun bet is done for now. But let's go up because the first ski man is a pretty exciting one. Tau Krybeck, he's an Austrian rider. If you're an Instagram addict and, and you love to watch these guys like I do and see what they're up to, Tao has been getting after it. Backflips, threes, he's learning cork sevens, he's doing all kinds of stuff. The snow in Austria has been fantastic and Tao has been making the most of it. He's such a he's such a joyful rider. He's always just so excited to ski. And I'm really looking forward, Neil, to seeing that expressed on this canvas. Yeah, absolutely. Tao Krybeck, he's all seen all the time. And he's about to go. I know that he's got at least one trek lined up on this face. Having just seen Hippic Vessel stomp a massive backflip will be super motivating for him. And the fellow peak performance rider getting the guy's ski credit good kicked off out of the steep start so far today. He had the same mindset that we heard from Olivia. I don't want to put down a late run. I'd rather crash doing something awesome. And so he's going to do that 360 right off the top over the exposure cannot give enough credit to how difficult and scary that is tau now right into the guts of it into this double stomping it lining up something else down here but unfortunately coming unstuck in that sh crusty snow damn it tau is going to be so gutted about that he's going to go stand on what i believe was his takeoff and he's going to send it anyway Boom! He knew that line when. He'd been studying it for days. I know that he was so psyched to flip that. I'm pretty sure that a backflip was what he had planned there, and it looked like he was coming in hot for it, but that crusty snow just catching him out, that is super disappointing, man. Yeah, and, and you know, this is where we're going to see technique come into play. I keep harping on it. If you throw your skis sideways abruptly in the crust, it's not going to go well. Everything in, in this snow condition has to happen smoothly. You can see Tao almost got taken down there, but he managed to hold it and then put that down. That's a veteran move that to be able sick. to come back from an unbalanced moment and then throw a 360. And then Tao here at the bottom with this massive send, getting a little sat down, but uh, you know I think you got to give it to him there because that was so big and definitely firm conditions to be yep. landing on. Exactly. I think a lot of people are going to be off that today and so actually kind of nice of him to put a put a takeoff and landing track in there to show people where the the angle is also i think it was just so psyched to, to hit that he didn't want to step away from it after that unfortunate control issue just above it but yeah uh, you can see on the judges criteria control and fluidity down which is unfortunate for tau but it does make sense given what we saw throwing things sideways and then unfortunately just not able to hang on dropping the hip to the inside so tau he's pretty disappointed as he was on a, pr a solid run yeah, there really that three at the top man i can't even talk enough about that how impressive just the risk of that was 45 points for tau uh, yeah, as you said, Neil, gutted for him. Even with the crash, he's still not far below the 50 mark, which would be kind of a good four run. So Tal Krybeck, really gutted for him today. I'm sure he's gutted as well. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, reminding us of his Hakubal round last year, where I thought he could have taken a podium place and coming unstuck at the very bottom. He's got it in him, and he's going to put it together one of these days soon. Yeah, absolutely. All the elements are there. They just need to all come at the same time for Tal. It's there. We will see it for sure. We saw it last year in uh, in Fever Room, finally putting all the elements together. Looking forward to when we see that from Tao. We're going back up to the top. Local rider, wild, er, wild card into this event, Danny Fornell Pratt. He has been a tour rider in the past. He's now um, he's working here as a, as the frontier guard. And we saw him uh, we saw him wild carding into this event last year as well. The locals love him. The riders love him. Everybody comes back to see Danny and gets so excited. And really fast out of the start gate. I think going a little bit further left than most people have gone from that. Making three turns into a transfer air into the next chute. Landing in some crusty snow and still holding it together. Danny Fornell Pratt charging down here. Yeah, showing that local knowledge and really, you know, veteran there. The patience. Look at Danny getting right into it. Oh, but catching up on that hit and falling down through that double. I think he's all good. I think he might have lost a ski. Can you see there on the screen, Derek? Yeah, hard to tell. It's uh, Yeah, he's definitely got a ski off, but he's up and moving. He's waving that he's all right. I think just pretty bummed. Man, aggressive skiing from Danny Fornell Pratt there. He was coming into it just, as you said, caught up in the middle of the double. The snow conditions are tricky, and they are not consistent. So from one turn to the next, you can have a completely different climate. Now Danny is back on the move. It looks like he has 
Oh, no. We're, are we watching replay here? No, no. Uh, yes, I believe we are. Getting a bit confusing sometimes uh, between watching with our own eyes live and watching the screen. What's happened there? Oh, yeah. So he bumped off the rock wall. His angle was just a little bit off. He bumped off the rock wall. It took his ski, and then he was in the middle of the shelf, middle shelf of that double on one ski facing the wrong way, which is not where you want to be in a situation like that. But Danny's up and moving and good. He's just now waiting for the ski ninja to get his ski, which is going to be a feat in and of itself if it's still on the middle patch of that double. Yeah, I think that's where it is, isn't it? And that's a world tour <laughs> rider quality of skiing, which is quite a big ask of a, of a ski ninja, of a ski dude or dudette that uh, a volunteer workers and big ups to the volunteer workers that have uh, have come today to help us with, with things like that. The local crew, very supportive, the whole community here in Andorra and Ordino, the town and Ordino Akalis, the ski resort. Uh, really helping us out that was very welcoming and, and very supportive of the Freero World Tour and you know whether it's uh, making sure that we're that we're comfortable and, and welcome and uh, set up to do the things we want to do and the jobs we need to get done or you know trying to con <laughs> collect someone's ski from the middle of a double drop and a slightly exposed section of a Freeride World Tour venue you know they're, they're really committed here. <laughs> Imagine how that guy feels right now he volunteered to be a ski ninja and I uh, thought I might have to retrieve a couple skis and you know get some get to meet some tour riders and now he is in the absolute heart of the gnar looking down being like what how am i supposed to get that you know he's going to have to hit that air and stop immediately honestly i'm really glad to be sitting in this commentary booth right now and not up there in the ski ninja shoes cuz that uh, i am not jealous no that's a tough situation <laughs> for that i mean maybe we shouldn't be laughing he's probably terrified yeah i, um, I feel bad but Danny Fornell Pratt showing why he is given the local wild card into this uh, into this event, absolutely pinned. You can see where he came in on the side angle for that double. That's not that's not something that everybody would have spotted. You know, that's that's local knowledge and and veteran sort of uh, line choosing for Danny. But unfortunately, not working out for him now. And we're putting our ski ninja to work to collect Danny's ski. There we go. So hopefully, not going to leave too big of a pit there for our um, our subsequent riders, but I think uh, I think those guys can handle it. Yeah, I think so too. A bit of side slipping is usually what people do to, to prepare jumps, right? So <laughs> he's just preparing the jump for the following riders. Uh, Danny waiting patiently above some exposure for a ski to get delivered. He's pretty relaxed guy in the mountains. In fact, working as a Border Patrol policeman in the mountains for Andorra to prevent smuggling across the high passes. So very specialized job. Yeah, it's pretty cool to see him uh, step out of that professional role and step right back into the role of professional freeride world tour skier. Um, pretty diverse skill set on the man. And uh, glad to see that he's all right after that. It was looking a little bit scary for, for a moment as we lost sight of him bumping through the center patch of that double. But Danny's all right. He's going to get his ski back on, get back down to the bottom. And uh, it'll be virtual high fives and socially distanced hugs at the bottom with the other athletes as they finish. Yeah, exactly. So Danny Fulnar Pratt, I think that in some ways local knowledge might have almost let him down a little bit here because that line that he skis usually goes. Uh, a little bit of a low tide year here in, in Andorra and uh, with, you know, Akalis this year. And uh, that line usually has a better takeoff. So he knows ah, that went recently, it probably went you know a week or two ago. I'll go ski that. No one else ski that because they don't know it as well as I do. But because other people don't see that it, it's on because it doesn't look on right now. <laughs> he tries it, catches a rock on takeoff because there's not enough snow and, and loses his ski. So not always beneficial to have local knowledge. Yeah, glad to see Danny up and riding, pinning his way down. Man, I, I'm just so impressed with the aggression that he showed in his skiing at the top of this venue. It is so steep and definitely a little bit of funk in the snow. We've seen a few other riders get caught out. He was clean through there. The patience waiting to load up the turn instead of doing it quickly, throwing him sideways. That's, uh, you know, that's, that's the kind of thing that comes from experience, comes from years of doing it. You don't rush these things. And if you keep, if you keep the patience in play, then you're going to have a good outcome. That's right. All right, moving back up to the top. Rookie out of Region 1, David DeLive. He's a Swede. He is a shredder. He's been roaming around with uh, with some of the Frenchies and the American rookies just going for it. I love the way this guy skis. He's such a free spirit. 
He's, he's one of many riders on this tour that just seem to do it for the absolute joy, for the passion of it. And, and you know, as a, as a spectator of the sport, I'd love to see that. So let's see David's first run on the Freeride World Tour. David Leave coming straight towards the Hedvig Vessel Cliff, I'm going to name it. I wonder if it's going to have the same result. Big backy and stomping it so cleanly. First thing on the Freeride World Tour from David Leave, and he is right into the NAR. I was really excited to see this guy, and it's already slaying, putting down. Is he going to hit the Tal Krybek Cliff, as I'm going to name that one? I think he is. And another massive backy off that one, but coming unstuck. Oh, the, the trajectory just a little bit off. You can see it's so specific. The way the Tau hit that was the only way that you can hit that. And David's trajectory was just a little bit off, and it sent him off that next air. He looked like he was balanced, but uh, pretty hard pressed to keep it together when you've just landed a, uh, I don't even know, a 10 meter backflip to, to accidentally fly off another clip. David, fine, he's up, he's already into the finish line, but man, well, we're talking about cards on the table. This rookie has just laid down a handful of aces, unfortunately a joker in there, which was the slight uh, off angle. Let's take a look at this first one. Oh, just so clean on landing. I mean, Hedwig's was awesome and, and David's was too, but like just the control straight into a turn on that one. And this bottom one, even bigger, the Dynastar Rider, lucky to avoid those rocks, actually. I'm glad that he's come out of that in one piece. His body and skis both completely attacked, but uh, the first rookie run for the young Swede, you know, the hungry Swede, they call him. Damn, amazing. Yeah, that was solid, and, and you, you got to give him credit for the full send attitude. Absolutely cracked wide open on the throttle. Just maybe a little bit of, a, if I can say, a rookie mistake there with the angle at the takeoff for, for David Delive. 38-3-3, so that's not going to cut it for today. But, man, we have seen what he has in his pocket, and I think we are in store for a heck of a season there from this young Swedish rookie. Woo, the men's ski field already delivering quite an exciting show. We're going right back up, and uh, this this one, this is close to home for me. Cooper Bathgate, another free ride, uh, Worcester Freeride Club athlete, known this young man since he was a, a, a very young buck. He's been at the Freeride Junior World Championships a couple times. He's here on the tour. He was second overall last year on the FWQ in North America. He's pretty excited. He kind of likes the look of his face. His twin brother, Jackson, won here in 2016 at a junior event. Uh, so Coops has, has a bit of a, an affinity for this for this venue. Hopefully he's going to be able to show us what he's got on this face. That's right. Starting from the looker's right start. A bit of a change going over towards where we saw Elizabeth Gerritsen go and uh, yeah, steeing off that transfer air. Yeah, really nice way to start things going into a completely different section of the venue. We've seen anyone else go slashing it up, showing some freestyle fun, love and attitude and approach. We can't see him right now at our own eyes, but on the screen, he's coming back to a completely different section of the venue we've seen anyone else go to. So that transfer just closed Classic true to form for Cooper. He loves that kind of cross court stuff. He likes to go really far off things. Oh, huge there as well. Coop's working this looker's right, uh, skier's left side. Now coming in fast into this lower section. We'll see what he's able to get. Sending over that entire section. Cooper Bathgate in and out in a blink. So super different line, but finding some massive features in that section. Oh, that was exciting for Cooper. He's going to be pleased so with that. So creative, man. It is awesome to see. Cooper Bathgate, I'm pretty sure he's about to sit down in the hot seat. Our first three have crashed, and then our fourth person has gone somewhere completely different. Super styly on his feet and just made it look like a lot of fun. Yeah, I love this one at the top. It wasn't a big takeoff, but he went so far yeah. off it. And then finding his way through this ultra technical middle section going big there. Look how firm, stable, steady he is on his skis. So clean, fluid, smooth, and to the bottom. The only thing I think the judges may have to say about that, are they going to consider the difficulty of the line there for Cooper 6333 so if if i if i had to guess difficulty of line may be the thing that held that one back for Cooper cuz uh, 100% cause, agree yeah control was there fluidity was there air and style all there line line difficulty on this face maybe not quite uh, we'll see what everybody else is going to have in store but Cooper sitting in the hot seat on his first run in the free ride world tour Cooper basket kind of reminding me of a young Drew Tabke yeah, I think that's a fair comparison for Coops. He's, uh, he, as we said, he's got the affinity for, for those cross-court features. And uh, 
these two young boys, well, they're men, sorry, grew up together, Tom Pfeiffer, in the free ride club, but could not be more different in their approach in terms of terrain. If, uh, you know, if Cooper is a young Drew Tabke, Tom may be more of like a like an Imar Navarro, but with some tricks. <laughs> yeah. He's he's loves the steep, the gnar, the ultra technical, and he just likes to go so fast. So let's see what Tom Pfeiffer has in store for us right out of that steep start. That's right, as you're saying, different to Cooper, starting from the steepest start and getting straight into the gnar. I think that snow is already getting a little bit worked with the number of riders are coming through, but same as Tal Krybek, three off the top, super smooth, stompy solid, and taking to a cross hill air really far across the hill, a little bit backseat because of that hard snow on the landing and a little bit of flat landing, but <laughs> So flat there. Tom wow. was concerned about the flatness of that landing. You know, we, we chat sometimes about his lines. And I tried to with all the athletes, and he was like, I don't care. I'm still doing it. I really want to. Now, another new section being opened up here, Neil. Tom Pfeiffer opening up the complete look his left side where I think the snow is better, turning it into a double, pointing it off that, managing to avoid the tree and come out hot into that bottom area. Nobody else has gone even remotely close to here. The complete opposite side of the venue to Cooper. The two young Canadians showing that they can be as creative as you like. And with another air that nobody's hit, into the good snow, keeping it shady, keeping it smooth. Tom Pfeiffer, another good run for his first of the season. Wow, I think that's going to be a potential hot seat competitor. That was straight to plan for Tom. The, the three at the top, I mean, we saw Tao do it. That must have been uh, reassuring for Tom to see Tao do it, to know it works. And then going way over into the other side of the venue into a, a, uh, a previously unridden section, really relying on the tails of his skis there to hold him up as that was absolutely pancake flat. And then this massive double skirting next to the tree. Tom keeping it clean, showing he's been doing his squats uh, over the offs season. That was a solid run for Tom Pfeiffer. Things are looking here, nice here, in the sick. green uh, on the on the bars there. Fluidity a little low. Not sure where the fluidity was down on that one, but exciting to see what the judges are going to make of it. As you said, just totally, totally different take on this face uh, of what we saw from Cooper and everybody else so far. So judges deliberating now. Cooper Bathgate with a 63-3-3 as the score to beat. Tom Pfeiffer, he's looking, you can tell he's looking at the screen, looking at the judges, trying to figure it out. Really interested to see, uh, you know, this is where things get tricky for the judges when things are so different between runs. Just like you said, they couldn't be more different. Dude, uh, starting from one start, right starting from a different like, start, sending uh, Mallow ears really far, <laughs> you know, doing something no one else has done. And Tom Pfeiffer, 74 points. That is super solid. The judge is preferring that probably because of the line choice, like you were saying before, a little bit steeper terrain, managing to flash through things that is a little bit gnarlier rather than sending Mallow ones really deep. And Tom Pfeiffer sitting in the hot seat, 74.00 points. Yeah, and I think likely they zinged him a bit on control for getting sat down on that long cross-court uh, transfer in, essentially into the flats. Um, but the rest of that run for Tom, very solid. The 360, we saw it with Tao. Uh, I, that 360 is rowdy. It's so steep up there. You can't, can't say enough about how rowdy it is to do a 360 up there in the steeps. It just shows the level that we're at. And boom, straight back into it. Former Rookie of the Year. This isn't a... <laughs> I mean, we're going to go through this all day with this start <laughs> yeah. list, but every single one of these athletes, as they stand in the start, we 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 could be looking at a potential winner. Andrew Pollard, straight out of Alta, Utah, wants to give a big uh, big shout out to his sister, who is at home. Jacqueline, we miss you. We know Andrew misses you. Big slash at the top. Andrew Pollard on course. That's right. This guy got third most votes for how many people thought they were going to be on the podium. Uh, so quite a crowd favorite, quite a local favorite. Had the Golden Bib on for a while, was it last year, I believe? And uh, coming to another creative lookers right section of the venue, similar to Cooper at first, but then transferring back into the big open shoot. Andrew is a master at finding routes through places that other people don't see. He is so smooth, so fluid, and coming down now into this lower section, Andrew making short work of this and teeing up a huge one right off the top. Andrew Pollard, wow. Yes. Another run with a whole bunch of features we haven't seen before at all. Andrew finding transition, that is his, if I had to say, his superpower. He always finds transitions. You never see a Paul landing flat. 
there had to be a commitment to that cliff as well. It's quite long, and although the takeoff angle and landing angle work quite well, you see the transition was found, you have to come into that with pace. You have to be completely confident you found the right takeoff, the right landing, just like David Dilley didn't quite manage to do, and be like, this is going to work as long as I go fast. <laughs> And he did. He was so smooth and fluid in there. Andrew suffering a dislocated shoulder a couple uh, couple weeks ago at home. He said to me, I can't take a big impact. So he's going to be looking even more than usual for those ultra smooth APOL style landings. And he found that there. Never once did you see the heavy head. Never once did you see him even really dig very deep into his travel. Look at this. That's a huge air. Boom. Clean stomp. He's got long, strong legs and managing to hold on to that one nice and clean. So uh, another super different run for, for Andrew Pollard. Different than what we saw from Cooper. Different than what we saw from Tao and David. And different from Tom. So really challenging for the judges to really put this all together. I'm loving the variation today. I'm not sure if the judges are <laughs> much easier to compare people that give the same line, and no one is cooperating with that right now. Awesome to see so many different features, so many different takes, so many different interpretations of this venue. And Andrew Pollard sitting in the hot seat with the 76.67, knocking Tom Pfeiffer out. He didn't get to sit there for a long, even though he had such a sick run. So, wow, damn. We're seeing a North American uh, sitting in the podium in the hot seat with two other North Americans behind them right now. But plenty of other riders still in the Starcade. Nothing is decided yet, as we uh, as we well know. This this field is absolutely stacked with talent, and a lot of hungry riders, both new and old. Well, not old, maybe new and veteran, uh, who want to have their say in the final outcome of this. Current standings right now: Andrew Pollard sitting first, a uh, Tom Piper in second, Cooper Bathgate in third. Those guys happy with where they're at, but this guy he wants to have uh, he wants to have his say. Mael Olivier. Qualified number one out of the FWQ in Region 1. That is Europe and Oceania. And he, uh, well, he did it with authority. When you watch Mael ski, it's powerful, it's fluid, it's fast, and it's always huge. I can't wait to see him unleash on this one. Absolutely. Big fan of this guy. Mael Oliver getting straight into the steep, gnarly technical zone. Ski's so strong, just like you were saying, and spinning a three into a double. What is going on up there? Wow, Mael spinning into that hourglass. That is a risky move. We wondered if anybody was going to air into that. Well, question answered now, as not only did Mael air into the hourglass, he spun into it, and he is making short work of this face. That was a flat landing, too. Is he going to take on this monster at the bottom? It's got a quite a short landing, and he does. He takes it on. He stomps it. It's like it's nothing tranny finding sniping the perfect landing and coming quick over to tom pfeiffer's bottom air yeah he landed in the only possible place off that huge one that is that you could and still stick it way up high in the landing yeah and my also finding that uh, that tom pfeiffer zone at the bottom over top of the cave he is happy what a way to start a freeride world tour career rookie run run number one Mael olivier throwing down the gauntlet, so to speak, with a fantastic run. That was solid. And look at the judging criteria lit up. I have a feeling the judges are going to like that one. Yes, I do. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've been waiting to see this guy on the World Tour for quite a while. He has oh, that three into a shoot, into a double is unbelievable. Great drone footage, too. Uh, winning the Slovakia competition years ago, and then uh, two years out with a head injury that really debilitated him for a while. Something you've got to look after. I'm really glad he did look after it so well, but still able to come back, do so well in the FWQ last year, and then that air on his first FWT run, I think we could be looking at someone new in the hot seat. I'm going to be saying that all day. Yeah, that was a really strong run. The line, the commitment to spinning into that hourglass straight line at the top with the double, all of it, and then the huge air hitting the transition absolutely bang on perfectly. Putting the judges to work is Mael. Andrew Pollard sitting nervously. Um, well, he's in the hot seat woo! now, Mael Oliver. 89 points. That is so banger woo! for your first run. Rookie on the tour, been wanting it and deserving it for a long time. And it might be a little while longer till that hot seat gets changed. Just got changed twice in a row. But I think this guy might there be for a bit longer, Derek. That was a solid run. That was a great way to kick off... Uh, uh, a great way to kick off his career on the Freeride World Tour. As you said, we, we kind of expected to see him on the tour a little bit earlier than this year, but Mael, had, he had that head injury, and, and as you said, and for, for you young riders out there, you want to listen to this, 
you got to take the time to get that stuff right. It's worth taking the time because if you do, you can come back like that. If you go back too early, things are not uh, as solid. So stoked to see my L back in the mix. Christopher Tud L now in the start gate. So this guy's uh, pedigree needs no introduction, but FWT overall champ 2018. He was second overall and really looking to take take it to Isaac on the back. Didn't get the chance to, so he's coming back hungry. The mellowest guy who is a Jekyll and Hyde at the start gate. He's so calm when we're, when you're free skiing, he wants to go for a coffee, drops out of the start gate, and you get fireworks. Yeah, that's right. So many different interpretations of this top section so far today. I've been loving them all. Hedvig Vesselcliff, I'm going to call it that, and he's doing the same as her with the perfect backflip, but getting hung up in the landing. Christopher Turdell, damn, the guy with the most votes for probability for being on the podium today. And I think that landing might be getting a bit bombed out because he was perfect in the air. Yeah, it looked super stable. And, and I, I got to say for Turdell, that is super uncharacteristic. You don't see him go down very often. He is usually textbook, especially on a flip. Maybe you're right. It could be a bit of the landing. Uh, hard to say, but definitely coming out swinging there for Christopher as he wants that title again. You know, like... Uh, like here, let's just have a look. Christopher, really solid up at the top, coming in. His, ski blowing off. His ski came off. That is unreal. That's the third athlete in this event who's just walked out of a ski and had a fantastic run. Uh, unfortunately, dropped by uh, by a technical issue by the bindings just releasing. That's really, really unfortunate to see for Christopher. Like you said, Neil, you're like, the flip looked good. I don't know what happened there. Well, now we know. Uh, hard to ski away from a move like that on one foot. Not sure if he knows where his other ski is either. Looks like he's almost walking around probing for it. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, the snow in general is pretty good, pretty rippable, pretty stompable, but I think a couple of places there's kind of this, like, crusty, breakable crust. No, sorry, he wasn't probing for his ski. He was just pulling out of the snow. And so that, that breakable, I mean, these pro athletes know how to use their gear. They know how to set it up. They know how to select the right stuff. Like, I don't think that it's, like, a gear failure. I think it's just that this, this catchy, occasionally grabby, maybe breakable for one foot crust in some places that's hard to predict where it is has cost Elizabeth Gerritsen... Christopher Turdell and uh, was it Olivia McNeil? Uh, all skis. Yeah, that's heavy. Uh, some 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 solid athletes going down there with uh, with that. Uh, I mean, like you said, not necessarily equipment failure, but just the um, snow conditions. So quite a contrast here. We've seen some absolute banger runs, and we've seen some really good runs go sideways so far in the ski men's field. So. Uh, not really sure where we stand yet. You know, we've seen a bit of both and, and both ends of the spectrum. And we are only eight athletes in. So peak performance rider, Christopher Turdell, you know, he smiles. He's, I mean, he's the, the most wonderful man out there. He's just such a great guy to be around. And, and we're going to hear some stories. I'm sure he's bummed. Um, but plenty more athletes to go up at the top. So no score for Christopher as he did lose a ski on that run. That's right. The peak performance ride out of Sweden, the previous World Tour champion and could have been World Tour champion again last year if the Bechter Ross happened, unfortunately. Cancelled due to the COVID nation. But uh, Christopher Turdell, smiliest man, even though he's crashed and we'll see more of him in the next stops, hopefully here and hopefully next week. Yes, fingers crossed for that. We're going back up to this rowdy, rowdy start gate up in the NAR. Our, uh, another one of our North American Region 2 rookies is Ray McDermott out of A Basin in Colorado. This young buck who's saying he grew up ski racing, didn't compete in freeride as a junior, and then kind of, uh, you know, dabbled in the queues a little bit and found himself three seasons later qualifying for the Freeride World Tour and now standing in the Stargate at Ordino Arkley's. He's got a great attitude. I really like watching Ray ski. He's, he's kind of playful, he's fun, but super sandy and chargy, and he's looking to make a mark here on the Freeride World Tour. Yeah, that's right. Very modest young man. Said so he snuck onto the Freeride World Tour, but there's no sneaking around the qualifying circuit. You are a sender if you make it. And he's starting off with a really nice center. I love that kind of ear. Full speed, floaty, nice grab. Just looking so controlled and confident. Leo Slimmett-esque for me. Yeah, it's been cool to see Ray, Michael Mon. These guys have been traveling with some of the European athletes. He came over early, um, you know, hadn't really skied in Europe before, so wanted to get used to the terrain, used to the snow and all that. So been skiing in uh, Ordino Arcalis for, for a week now and just loving it. These guys are having a great time over here. And now Ray lining things up at the bottom, getting a little forward, but saving it. Oh, that was a ninja move. <laughs> yeah, Ray, known for his freestyle as well. And uh, chucking in super smooth grab off that bottom air too. I think uh, the first guy to, to hit that 
that air with that landing that's a bit more sun crusty and you know it didn't lose a ski but one of them kind of went out behind him for a little while and well done to pull it back yeah i feel like that section is going to be the most variable it was really crusty early on we saw our forerunner almost wash out on it then we saw olivia get taken out by the breakable crust i i wonder now if it's actually starting to melt if the surface is going to uh, is going to change again like this one for ray so you know I, i'd say for ray right now this was a dip of the toe into the freeride world tour he didn't come out absolutely swinging but what he did do is come out on his feet which is a strong suit or a, a strong showing for a rookie and uh you know you're going to be happy with that you're going to be able to build into your season there for for ray well you see the first three people come out of the start gate crash and lose skis it doesn't seem like a bad idea to stay on your feet get to the bottom get some points in the bag you know the snow was variable and uh, you can either just absolutely send it and and go for win or crash or you know just do a smart thing go for a good ride dip your toe in as you were saying and get some points to hopefully stay on the tour yeah, so here's a look at our standing so far. Maël Olivier is in first, 89, and then a pretty big gap down to A. Paul. Tom Pye for Cooper Bathgate right now sitting in fourth, and that is the crash line. Tao, David, uh, Christopher, and Danny all going down. Tao and uh, David Delive keeping their skis on, so they were able to get a score. So right now we're going to just wait and see what the judges thought about uh, about young Mr. Ray's run on that one. First run on the Freeride World Tour. What a mental game. When you're a rookie, you're standing up there and you're watching guys like Turdell go down before you and eat it and lose their skis that must play games with your head when you're you're in the start gate Ray 67 sitting in fourth place right now and he has got to be happy with that we are almost halfway through the guys ski field today so 67 points and sitting in fourth halfway through the guys ski field in your first ever competition that is not bad yeah, good way to get things started. We'll see where that ends up after the rest of the men's field. We still have almost half the field to go, so plenty still to play for. As we see the gorgeous Pyrenees, the view up here of the Pyrenees, absolutely spectacular here in Andorra. So the next competitor in the gate now, we have Blake Marshall out of New Zealand and one of the only Kiwis able to make it, one of the most difficult countries to arrive from. Uh, Blake Marshall, one of the only uh, two Kiwis out of the seven that were qualified here this year. And uh, yeah, he's, he's ready to go. He, wanted, he said he wanted us to give a shout out to all the Kiwis here and back home, the ones that couldn't make it, the ones that did make it to Europe and then got injured and couldn't come here to compete, like Sam Lee. Big shout out to you. Big love to you. I came here wearing my Kia Kaha hoodie, which is a picture of a Kia on it. And I guess that only New Zealanders will get that joke, but uh, sending it out to you and big love to you guys. So Blake has been through the ringer. He traveled here from Geneva to Barcelona. They lost all his equipment, his, his ski bag, his stuff, everything gone. So looking at Blake, he is in a collection of the Freeride World Tour family's gear to get it done. He's got he's got skis from his sponsor, which is fantastic. Stoked to ski. He's wearing some of your stuff, Neil. He's wearing my helmet. Blake is, but he was, his attitude about it was great. He's kind of walked around the hotel collecting equipment from people and was like, yeah, no, I'm good. I just need a helmet. Like, all right, cool. Yeah, back protector. Yeah, Abby gear. Sure, sweet. No problem. So Blake, you know, he's not letting it phase him. He's so stoked. He's such a happy guy. But man, I, I'm so excited to see him drop in here because he is a he's a dark horse contender i think for a win here absolutely so solid so technically correct so much style as well both the ski instructor and a park coach and bringing a tail grab three off that damn dude what a way to start it off on hedwig vessel skis i believe <laughs> yeah it's so cool to see him just style it out with the tail grab there into this double zone that's caused a few people some problems now blake laying on that turn getting over into the middle section of this course now that ski instructor technique just working for him and now lining up the cliff that we've only seen male oliver hit and taking that with style down into the landing shifting it out going for the grab landing a little bit deeper and just popping off that on slightly shorter skis than he's used to because the hedwig vessels tail grab three off the top hit coming into the finish corral celebrating and doing it for the kiwis he is psyched big congrats bud wow blake uh unreal run look how happy he is to have put that down so right into the guts of the gnar at the top and then into this thing the way you have to set up that turn immediately immediately above that cliff shows such a mastery of control for them to be able to spin off it and then this one again the landing option 
is so small. The window is tiny. If you go a little too far, you miss the transition and you're gonna pancake yourself. Blake knew that. He did it exactly the way it needed to be done, and that was dead clean. So stoked to see him standing in the bottom with a smile on his face. Maya loving it. <laughs> <laughs> the only two to hit that bottom air that I really liked, and uh, Blake Marshall, is he going to sit down in the hot seat with all his borrowed gear and in Stoke doing it for the Kiwis that can't be here? Such an impressive run from the Kiwi, and second place with 83 points. Blake Marshall, yes. Yeah, the Kiwis back home. The Kiwis. So the Kiwis back home, he's saying it, he's calling it fifth place overall on the Freeride World Tour last year. And looking to improve on that, giving a fist bump to the hot seat, Mael Oliver. Yep, Mael going to hold on to the hot seat for the moment, but plenty of action still to come here in the ski men's field. Freeride World Tour stop number one. We are in Ordino Arcalis in Andorra. It's Friday, that means it's comp day, and this is an interesting man in the start gate. Isaac Freeland, he was a rookie last year. I'd say outside of the U.S. and Canada, virtually unknown, but those of us who knew him, who watched him grow up and watched him on the qualifiers, knew what he had in the bag, and he finally unleashed it last year right here in Andorra with that switch under flip that just blew minds. Freeride World Tour is still milking that clip on social media because it's just so wild. And Isaac went on to become the tour champion in his first year. Now he is back as champion. Heavy is the head that wears the crown. He's mm. like, yeah, I feel a bit of pressure now as the champ. Yeah, that's right. Uh, getting picked up by Black Diamond since winning the Freeride World Tour last year. He's a Black Diamond athlete, and so is Victor De La Rue. So they're holding on to the two returning champions. And with a massive backy off this top hit, taking it like a champ, stomping with those stomp legs. It looked like that landing is getting a bit cut up, but managing to deal with it with his red technique. Great technique, and Isaac is so strong. If you follow him on the gram, he does burpees with a backflip in them. What? Instead of a squat, he does standing backflip burpees. The guy is a powerhouse, and he's showing it. He is coming in here so fast above all this expo exposure. Isaac transferring across that gully, what stepping over that, that second rock. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> we're lost. We're lost for words. We are speechless about that. I'm not 100% sure if that's what he meant to do off that bottom air, but with those stompy, strong legs, he just took it like the champ that he is, landing on the takeoff of another air. Isaac Freeland just blowing our minds. I'm going to go out on a limb and say he did mean to do that because he was smiling at the bottom. And if you did that by accident, you would have that I almost died face. And Isaac didn't. He looked stoked. So massive flip off the top. So strong. And then look at the speed he carries into this. Just taking it deep, going for the grip. They're not getting a bit on those long and lows. Sometimes it's hard. And then let's look at this transfer here at the bottom, Neil. Taking off before the takeoff, pre ollieing they call it. And uh, landing like in a place that worked for him. Uh, again, I'm not 100% sure. I'm looking forward to asking him later if that was exactly what he meant to do. But I think the judges are going to like it. You know, Even if it's something you didn't mean to do, but you stomp it that hard, that clean, and show that it's no problem for you, you're completely in control. Well, how can you not like it? I like it. I like it too. There was no loss of control. There was no problem. There was no falter in technique. That was that was absolutely banging, <laughs> flawless at the bottom. Uh, on purpose or not, uh, it was unreal. And like I said, he was stoked after. So this is kind of a, a serious challenge to Maya Olivier's run. Isaac Freeland really showing that his win last year on the tour, no fluke. You know, he had a bit of a strategy to ease into it last year. Well, that strategy is now out the window because everyone knows what he's got. So you might as well come out swinging. And he certainly did. Yeah, for sure. I wonder how you compare his massive backflip where other people have crashed at the top to Mael's three into a cool while with a double that no one else has tried. Very difficult as a judge. Super glad I'm not. Uh, that's not my job. 81.67 for Isaac Freeland. So that's going to put him into the third spot interesting loving the you know the judges man they are working hard there so blake right now holding on to second mael holding on to the top spot and isaac moving into the number three so he's looking at a podium finish currently but you cannot count on anything with this many great riders still in the start that's right not a lot of space between isaac and blake there so the judge saying they had very similar runs maybe just that missing the grab could be the difference in a situation like that you know so tight 
Yeah, and Blake got the grab on the three at the top. All of those things factor in, and the judges, you know, they've got their whole set of criteria that they uh, that they roll with. So we are up back at the top, and Jan Rossis, the Swiss shred dog, he was also injured last year. We didn't see him again after Kicking Horse, but stoked to see him. He was a second overall, or sorry, second in Hakaba. He's a always a threat on the back in Verbier here in Ordino Arkle. He's kicking off his campaign 2021. That's right, starting off from the steep start and probably the most key line from the, the guy's ski field today, starting from the steep knot and going over into the cool while that has a jump possibility out of it. Seen a couple of 360s off it today. Opening for the straight here today, Jan Rosses looked like he got a little bit bucked in the takeoff maybe that snow is getting cut up by the others that have been through there already. Yeah, tricky for these athletes to handle the changing snow conditions as they're changing quickly and, and drastically. Mm. So great to see Ian making it nice and clean through that double. I always like, oh, he's got a new What's take he on got this here? section. Doubling down through that, or maybe just a straight line in the shoot. A little bit difficult to see from this angle, but popping off that next feature, a smooth grab. Jan Rossi is very creative skier, taking a new line. No one else has done that yet. And the same bottom section as Tom Pfeiffer, I believe, coming through that quickly, has a track to follow and makes the most of it. Pumping off that bottom one, coming to the finish line with his arms out. He is happy to be back. Great first round back from injury from Jan Rossis. Yeah, another one in the ski men's field, finding a completely different section to ski. The creativity in this field is just so cool. You know, I love seeing these guys, their take on on the line and where they're skiing and finding takeoffs and finding landing zones that other people just haven't seen. Really like that turn right before the air. This one right here that Jan Rousses makes. That may be the cleanest anybody's done that. I know it's just one turn, but I really like that one. And then, as you said, not getting the three, but that one, that's classic Jan Rousses to me. Yeah, absolutely. Floating a big side hit with all of the style. And this one as well, no one else has even gone near that. Puts in the grab off that too. I think that this gray area of judging where it's like if you do something that no one else has done, especially late in the pack where other people had chances to ski it, it's kind of like, ah, oh, creativity is so nice. I want to reward that. I mean, I want to reward that. Maybe it's good I'm not a judge. Yeah, that's a tricky one because creativity, not a category in the judging criteria, but Jan Rossi's getting rewarded for it. 73-3, so putting him into sixth spot currently, uh, still with a fair few riders to go. But as you said, Neil, that's a solid return from injury for Jan and glad to see him back in the mix and showing that trademark style it seems like it's something in the water with the swiss riders they all just have a certain style and a certain way of interpreting the mountain that uh it's very pleasing to the eye all right we are back on talk drew tabke the condor the american eagle he is uh man he knows how to fly and uh, almost guarantee we're going to see something that nobody else has seen he's got such a great eye for original lines so smooth that's what i like about drew he's a, a, an interesting combination of smooth and really aggressive in his skiing really strong but he makes it look like it's easy even when it's not that's right the 2011 and 13 free ride world tour champion not enough to get him votes for being on the podium from the general public today. What are you going to do these days? He's here to show and prove he won the Huckabit event, the first event last year. So why would you not vote for this guy? He's so styly and sends such massive cross hill ears like this one. What are we going to see? Taking it clean there, stomping Drew Tabke now. Getting a little bit uh, caught up. It, I mean, the snow conditions are just so variable. So many different things. Super fast now off this lower section. Drew moving across court. You can always count on him to find something cross hill just like that. Drew landing in the uh, Saharan sand there, but it actually looks like it was a nice spot to land. Lining up this other bottom here as well. The two dudes in the hot seat and second. Uh, the only two people who have hit this, and he's hitting it as well, taking it even deeper than them. One, two, three, coming out of it so hot. And Drew, we know he loves to line up wind lips after big cliffs, and there he goes, doing it again with the grab. Smart skiing from the veteran, the 2011 and 13 World Tour champion. I don't think that's going to challenge the hot seat. I don't think it's going to challenge the podium, but it's very smart skiing to get a solid run down, start of the season, get some points in the bag, get the feeling back for your skis, you know, be ready for the next competition. Super clean, super smooth. I like this. You know, Drew saw Christopher go down there on that one. Took it a little bit more to the skier's right, which actually worked out super well for Drew. And then this one, cross hill, 
finding finding zones that other people haven't. And this, you know, you can see there on the judges' criteria, the fluidity a little bit down as he maybe hesitated a tiny bit more. And some of the other riders that may have gone in at the same speed, they hid their slowing down a little bit better mm. in turn shape versus with Drew throwing on the uh, the old pizza there. But he actually before. went bigger. That's the crazy thing. You've got to hide your slowing down. And they did it super well because they looked so smooth coming in. And Drew, a little bit more hesitant coming in, but then goes bigger and stomps it just as hard. So, yeah, yeah it's true. tough day to be a judge. Mm, tough day to be a judge. Drew Tabke, happy, all smiles in the finish line. Every rider that makes it to the finish line on their feet today, you got to give them full credit because that is a difficult task. Lots of different things going on on the face, lots of different snow conditions. Judges now, you know, they're working the numbers, they're uh, they're cracking the math, they're, they're putting the code uh, in play. Mael Olivier with that 89 even. Absolutely mind-bottling run for a rookie. But Mael, I mean, he, calling him a rookie is a little bit of a misnomer because he has been around for a while. He's, he's not a, a young kid. He's done a lot of this, but he's a rookie on the tour, and that is what it is, and he has shown that he belongs here and is looking to uh, to put a stamp on things here in Ordino Arcalis. Never too old to be a rookie. Nice start, Never too old to win a competition either. Drew Tabke winning Haku for the first stop last year and uh, saying afterwards that ah, I'm 35 years old and I didn't know if I could keep beating these kids. And uh, obviously he can, he's got the skill set to do it and to prove it. So it's awesome to have him back on the tour and uh, competing against literally a rookie, although not that much younger than him. Uh, Mael Oliver crushing four stars five, six years ago and having to take that couple of years off due to injury. Head injury is always something that should be taken safely and uh, seriously. So. Uh, Judges taking their time with this one. It looks like, you know, they've definitely got some, some things to think about. 68-3-3 there for Tabke. So that's going to put him in seventh, comfortable inside the top ten for now for Drew Tabke. So we'll see if that's going to hold up with uh, the rest of this ski men's field. Tons of talent still stacked up at the start gate. And things are starting to kind of light up as the picture starts to unfold for us. We've seen some rookies throw down. We've seen some veterans go down. Definitely things shaking up a little bit on uh, on the ski men's side of the field here. We still have snowboard men and snowboard women to go after this. So action-packed adventure for us. All right, back up to the start gate. Imar Navarro, local hero. This guy is a ski god in Andorra. They love him here. He's from Spain, but he, he spends a ton of time here. And they love him. And you know why they love him? Because he sends it. Imar Navarro, full throttle all the time. It's always exciting. You never know what you're going to see. Some of the highlight moments for me uh, all time on the Freeride World Tour have come from this man in this venue. He's always going for it. He's got such a such a different take. He finds huge airs into straight lines. He finds straight lines into huge airs. I, and he's just so st stoked on skiing. You watch him, you know, the films he's made with the... Um, South like down, Yeah, the South Lines down in South America. The, the couloirs, from his, from his perspective, look like they're not wide enough to make a turn. And yet, Navarro flowing through them like water. He's got such a great style and just so steady. I can't wait to see Imar unleash on his face. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Imar Navarro, as you're saying, a uh, big deal here in Andorra, big deal all over the place, but uh, doing very well in some, some of his best stuff here in Andorra, although not on this exact venue here at this this resort at Ordino Achilles, uh, but not before on this exact face he's just about to ski. So we've seen some fireworks go off here already here on the Potere. Uh, and Aymar Navarro is just about to do his own bit of contributing to those. Uh, a bunch of the athletes have done that big slash at the top. I love that. It's such a great way to get your mind into your line. Uh, big slash, get some snow moving, and just feel the stokes start to burn for you. So Aymar kicking things off with a big air up the top and now moving into a section we haven't seen a lot of traffic in. The same as Danny Fornell Pratt. Danny losing a ski on the takeoff. Can Aymar manage it? Yes, he does. Doubles down through that and takes it real fast. Crusty snow not hanging him up. That perfect technique you were talking about, just serving him super well there, managing to make his shutdown look easy coming straight into another big one. That was a massive send for Imar and him taking it another two ski lengths past any of the other bomb holes. We saw Drew go a little bit bigger than the other guys and then Imar really taking it. Wow. So that was a classic Navarro run. Top to bottom, almost dead fall line, super fast. 
with a couple of massive hits in it. I'm really glad to see him do the same move as we saw Danny do, just almost to give credit to Danny to show that it does work, it's possible to do it. And Navarro and, and Danny, the two kind of local legends, local heroes, both skiing that, like you said, that you know other people may not have even seen. Wasn't a bad idea, it does go. I'm on Navarro proving it. Coming to this one at the top, I don't think we gave him quite enough credit for, for how gnarly that was at the top. No one else has lined that up and that landing is just as chopped up. And uh, this one too, you can see he's literally skiing over rocks to his takeoff. Side hill, direction change, stomp, almost goes forward and then changes the direction. Wow, the line fluidity control, air and style and technique all massively into the green and I can see why. Yeah, and then flying off that. I'd say he caught the last ski length of transition on that landing any further than that and he's pancake town. But Imar can take it. He's so strong. The kite look about around there. He's giving, uh, giving props to his home resort. Now we're waiting. These judges are uh, they're working hard. They've got their work cut out for them. Another very different run. Seeing that line work out 80.33 for Navarro, putting him into fourth spot. So that's uh, that's a strong start for Imar to get things kicked off for his campaign here on the 2021 Freeride World Tour season. All right, we are going to head back up to the start gate. You can see the Pyrenees absolutely stunning. The scenery around here, these mountain, this mountain range, the Andorian, Andorian Pyrenees, Absolutely gorgeous. And look at the start gate is just tied up there, barely holding on to anything. What a place for those riders to be. That's gotta be terrifying to move into that. Yeah, the hike up to the start is gnarly by itself. Yeah, absolutely. So we're moving back to Switzerland here with Carl Renval. This guy was the man on the junior tour. He was unbeatable for a bunch of years. He made it on the tour as a very, very young man after only one year as a qualifier. Didn't make it back, but then when he re-qualified, he has now solidified himself as a tour rider. Fourth, you can see there last year in Andorra with an ultra stylish run. He's got such a such a kind of stylish take on skiing. Super different um, style, but it's very much his own slashing. I'd say Carl's, uh, Carl's trademark, those slashes and then the massive stylish shifties. Exactly, out of nowhere, like you don't think it's a cliff and then he goes ski so fast at it that it is. Transfers from one over another one, stomping that one and making it look easy. The Sun Guide Rider out of Verbier, Swedish heritage, Swedish name. French speaking, Swiss style, just like saying all those Swiss are so styly. Where was that? How did that work? I still don't understand and I still don't now. Creative ears from Carl Renval and was, another new line. Was that a rock tap mid line, mid air there? Did he tail tap that rock? It's so hard to see. I, I know we're going to get it on the replay. If he did, it 100% looked like he did it on purpose, which is absolutely sick there for Carl Renval. You can see he's got some snow on his goggles from those slash turns, giving himself face shots all the way down. Carl in the finish, another rider happy to be at the bottom, safe and sound and healthy, moving over into the uh, <laughs> into the waiting zone. Carl, always good for a smile. So let's have a look here. Couple slashes at the top, Carl. You can see that trademark, he's low and crouched and then it allows him to unleash the pop when he gets to the lips of, of his takeoffs. Unleash the pop, you cannot deny me this is a good run. All right, let's see, did he tap the rock? Uh, we're not going to get a look at it there. I'm not sure whether he did or he didn't. All lit up green there. Aaron Style fluidity, and that's the one that Carl always kind of wins on. He's so smooth and fluid as he flows down the mountain, heading over for a high five from my in the hot seat. Now anxiously waiting for Carl's uh, Carl's score to come in. The judges, they're looking at, you see, line, fluidity, control, air and style technique, and then the blend of all of those categories is what gives the judges their overall impression of the run, and that's where the number comes from. That number assigns them a ranking amongst all the other riders, and uh, from that, we get our results, we get our podium places, we get our tour champions. That's right, Carl Renvall, the judges wondering what to do with him today because he is such a unique one. Sitting in sixth with a 75, that is a pretty bang a start to the season for him. There's not that many riders left to go, so I think he is going to be happy with that. Walking his way up to the Vibram car. Up there. Antenna, wait. Yes, so let's see where we're sitting right now. Mile Olivier on an 89 even with an absolutely spectacular run. Blake Marshall, the Kiwi, skiing on everybody else's gear, sitting in second with an 83. And our reigning tour champion, Isaac Freeland, 81.67.
absolute savagery for these athletes. Imar Navarro and Andrew Pollard rounding out the top five. I'd like to go down into the finish area and see if we can have a chat to our current leader there, Mael Olivier. Mael, you're a rookie on the tour, but you just blew our doors off with that run. Maybe run us through it top to bottom. What did that feel like? Yeah, um, at the moment it's kind of still stressful, but I'm super stoked to land my run and also stoked to see all the riders from the bottom and enjoy the show and man I, I can't wait for the last four riders still very good riders on, on top so we'll see yeah I, I think that's a great point Mael. there's a ton of great riders up at the top we've got you on the screen can you see the screen there can you run us through your run and what it felt like when you were doing uh when you were doing this run yeah so i just came into the skinny shoots I planned to the 360 and was like super narrow, so I'm super stuck to land it in between the rocks. And then I kind of link this this part, it's kind of sh sharky, so I just try to don't eat anything. And I went on, on this big one and I ju just jumped over a dude. I was I was talking about that. And then coming to the, the biggest one, I tried to cut the right angle. I, I, I kind of land right next to the rocks. It was a close call, but well land and then came down and grabbed the grabbed the last one to me it's like kind of mandatory to go on the, the last feeders I, I don't want to miss anything so i can't go and pass next to a rock i just need to jump it you know <laughs> i'm glad to hear that man it was an impressive show to watch you've been fighting your way through the qualifiers for a few years now and it's awesome to have you on the tour you really deserve it how different does it feel being on the tour to being on the qualifiers yeah as you said, I, I've been battling for years on the qualifiers, so I, I feel I deserve this spot. So I, I feel like I'm, I'm right where I need to, to be. So I don't know, feel good. I, I mean, feel good. Stop. Nice one, man. Yeah, it is. And fantastic to have you here. You kind of reminded me of Vadik Gorek, also a Frenchman, also battling his way through the qualifiers for years, proving that he's got it, and then uh, coming out and, you know, winning the, the Bec de Ross. Uh, is that kind of your main goal? Are you really trying to get to Verbier, or are you just trying to qualify for next year? I mean, I know it's kind of the same thing, but like, it looks like you're coming out firing, looking for a tour title. Yeah, I, I, obviously I'm looking for Verbier, but i kind of more inspiring of guys like Leo. We, who is not here today, unfortunately, because of an injury. But uh, I'm going to try to keep this consistent consistency as Leo got for the last years. I mean, and try to to stay with you guys uh, uh, on the tour for many years. <laughs> Oh, Mael, thank you so much. That's exactly what we want, too. And with runs like that, we're looking forward to seeing many of them for years to come. So just a reminder for you guys sitting at home, this category is not finished. The ski men are still rolling, and we have a few more to go. It's not done. He said it and, and nailed it. Uh, Mael is... He's in stress town right now. You know, he's kind of freaking out. He's feeling good because he laid down the run he wanted to do, and he's feeling good because he's in the hot seat. But there's still a ton of talented riders up there that could have a say in this podium. So it's not it's not time for him to uh, to relax just yet. He's not even guaranteed a podium right now. We have four more riders left to go, and all of them, like every single rider in the start list, has the potential to sit in the hot seat to win to podium. So I can understand why he's stressed, man. It could be this first World Tour comp's first World Tour win, and it could be his first World Tour comp, his first time half the category in the hot seat and then not a podium. Yeah, absolutely. So we are, just so you guys know, we're on hold right now. We're refueling the heli so that we can give you the best views. We've got about five more minutes. And Speaking of you guys at home, you're hopefully watching from places where you can go skiing, whether it's every day or whether it's on the weekends or whether it's a couple times a year. Skiing is part of your home, it's part of our home, and it's a big part of Peak Performance. Peak Performance has the My Home Run Contest that's such a great way for you to get involved. Show us what you've got. Peak Performance, My Home Run. Ever since I was a kid, I've been driven by curiosity. My friends and I were always drawn to the next adventure around the corner. Maybe that's why I started skiing in the first place. Finding new runs and rediscovering old ones. The world might be upside down right now, but I will look for inspiration in the mountains nearby. Maybe you can do the same. It would be great to watch edits from your home mountains. Post it on Instagram, use the hashtag MyHomeRun and win fantastic prizes from Peak Performance. Here we 
are back live freeride world tour 2021 ordino arcalis you can check us out on freerideworld.com you can check us out on fuel tv you can follow us on all the social channels facebook instagram twitter wherever you like you'll find us there uh, and it replays both freeride world tour and uh, com and youtube but right now we're here it's happening ski men is firing neil what do you think so far I'm super impressed with the level. Uh, only a couple of people have put down safe runs, and I could totally understand if more people put down safe runs. You know, it's the first comp of the season. We don't know how many comps we're going to be able to have. Get uh, down on your feet, get some points in the bag. Seems like a pretty smart thing to do, but people have just been absolutely sending, you know, lots of lines that could win on a different day. Uh, lots of new lines, such a variation. People have literally put a lot of effort into scoping, which is awesome because it's the first time we've used this venue. and. A lot of people often end up chatting to each other and kind of ending up deciding on the same same lines together. But even people that scope together and ride together, you know, the same nationalities, the Swedes, the French-speaking crew, they're, they're not skiing the same lines. They're doing their own cool, creative stuff, and it's just such a pleasure to watch. Yeah, I, I'd almost say more line variation in one event than we've seen in a really long time, and it's got to be killer for the judges, but they are doing it. They're, you know, they're super pros. They know what they're looking at. They've been doing this for a long time. But from, from us, from this seat and from your seat at home, it makes for such a great show and for you guys at home you want to be involved you want to be in this show peak performance fun bet is your way to get involved you can vote on who you think is going to be on the podium and then uh, if you win well you're going to be decked out in all the best peak performance gear hi Carl Ringner here i'm a skier on the free ride world tour and my dream is to ski back to ross in verbier again but this time all the way down and make it to the podium. With Peak Performance Fun Bet, you can guess the results on all stops of the Free Red World Tour. <laughs> and if you do well, there are great prizes to be won. You can also create a private league to compete against your friends. <laughs> and hey, my final advice, bet on me and I promise you, I will make a flat three. Peak performance, fun bet. You got to get into it. You've missed it for today. If you didn't bet, you blew it. I betted, you betted. We're going to see, betted? Is that a word? I don't know. But we're going to see who came out where. Uh, it's a great way to get involved. And I love the idea of doing leagues, you know, with your crew at the office or your shred posse. You know, see, bet on your, uh, bet with your heart, bet with your brain. Whatever you do, just make sure you do it. And then uh, you can brag to your friends that you have nailed it when they have not. That's right. So Isaac Freeland, of the three people that were voted to be on the podium in the top three from that peak performance fun bet that you guys sent in, is currently in the top three. I wonder if he'll hold on to that spot. The Black Diamond Rider out of North America. Uh, like I are saying, Black Diamond, one of the tour sponsors, the safety sponsor for our uh, Avalanche safety equipment, airbags and so on. Uh, they've only got two riders on the tour and it's the reigning champ for both uh, ski and not the reigning champ for snowboard actually. The previous reigning champ, Victor De La Rue, last year Niels Minnick took it out, but Victor will be looking to get back on top. Yeah, still champion pedigree there and we are still kicking in our ski men's field right back up to the start gate. Heli is refueled. Look at this, Ross Tester. He was the junior world champion in 2017. He was telling me that he was really worried about visual inspection. And I said, Ross, the last time you did visual inspection, it worked out pretty well for you. He was like, oh, yeah, yeah, totally. All right, oh, I am good at this. <laughs> so pretty sick. And then taking the overall FWQ tour in Region 2 last year, Ross got a great pedigree. He kind of comes from, I think, Neil, the Isaac Freeland School of Skiing. Technically super solid, but with a very, very thick bag of tricks. Dude, no! that 360 was unbelievable. Mental from Ross Tester right now. I was just about to say I was the fastest person through that top scene so far today and backs it up with a 360 into the next. And then this I'm out of Varo Danny Fonal Pratt line trying to double down in a different direction. Where is this guy going? Facing the complete opposite way. A little flatter in the landing there, but Ross proving he's been doing his squats. Wow, what a way to start off a free ride world tour career. Ross Tester showing his, t oh, show <laughs> well, I'm, I'm speechless almost. Ross is on fire right now. This is such a strong run from a rookie with a huge backflip at the bottom. Massive backflip and then popping out of that wind lip in full control. That was unbelievable from this young man. The Ross testicles just blowing my mind. I cannot 
exaggerate enough how much this was an incredible run, start to finish, top to bottom, steepest, biggest tricks in there as well, looking in complete control the whole time. And wow, sitting there waiting for the heli to refuel, thinking about you're going to do that. All right, let's get a look at the replay here. That 360, just as I was saying, he had a deep bag of tricks. Unreal. And then look at the technicality of this. Moving, we saw Danny and, and Imar turn the other way, but Ross just bolting out of it a little flat, going deep into the travel, but handling it. And then this at the bottom, finding a little bit of a lip so he could get himself upside down with a huge backflip. Ross Tester throwing it down, cards on the table. What a run. And another different interpretation on this face. Um, I'm going to put it out there that's a podium. <laughs> just, yeah, I, I, just a guess. <laughs> safe bet, fun bet. Uh, Mael Olivier, in our interview uh, two minutes ago, said he was stressing hard. Well, his stress level just went through the roof into the red zone as Ross Tester just staked his claim on a potential uh, trip into the hot seat. You know, the judges have to work their way through the criteria, through all the line stuff, but certainly Mael's three into the hourglass has got to be nearly equaled by Ross's cross-court three right at the top of that skinny shoot. Both of those, I, I mean, I, we keep saying it, keep coming back to it, so glad not to be a judge right now. Just enjoying this as a spectator, loving the show. Those guys have to make a decision on that run versus Miles' run. Uh, not an easy call to make. The opposite of what you expect from someone that just said, oh, it's my second ever free ride world tour a visual inspection. Russ Tester, 91, 92 points. One as a ranking, taking a seat in the hot seat. 92-3-3. On your first run on the Freeride World Tour. Unreal way to start there for Ross Tester. Well, you know what? So far, he's 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 showing that he's pretty good at visual inspection. He's uh, he's done it twice, and both times he's been in the hot seat. Will he stay in the hot seat? We don't know. There's a couple of guys who would really like to take it from him. Uh, all of them have been on the podiums and in the hot seat before, but Ross Tester certainly staking his claim to win the event today here in Ordino Arcalis. Well, if the next person does not beat him, he's guaranteed a podium. And the next person would very like, very much like to beat him. He has come close a bunch of times, but we haven't seen him win one yet. And Carl Regner Eriksson, peak performance rider out of Sweden, would love to take the top step here in Andorra or anywhere. Second place in Kicking Horse last year with his good friend, the only man above him, Christopher Turdell. Carl is hungry for it. He's been a couple years on tour now. He's kind of solidified his spot in uh, in the family. But man, that event win has eluded him. And he is coming out swinging. Yes, yeah, super fast, straight out of the gate. Barely turning into these two big hits. Transferring a three up the hill to make sure he could turn back towards this other hit. We haven't seen much traffic on it, but another 360 off it. And coming towards Elizabeth Gerritsen's here. Popping that one, taking it deep, stomping it. This is unbelievable stuff so far from the young Wow. Swede. Carl is kind of going what we've seen Leo Slemmett do before, which is do as many threes as you can in a run. And it worked for Leo, and I feel it's going to work for Carl as he gets a little caught up there. That, I, I'm going to go out ahead and, or go ahead and say this, fastest run we've seen today. Yeah, I totally agree. Well known for that. Uh, top to bottom, they, uh, they tie in the Scandinavian Big Mountain Championship still. And he's won that, and he's often the fastest. In a big mountain competition chip, you don't usually see a lot of timed events, and it doesn't count towards the score. It's just for like a tiebreaker kind of thing. And Carl, well, that's his speciality. But one thing, he said he was going to do a flat three, didn't he? Only if you bet on him. Okay, not enough people bet on him. He wasn't in the top three picks for whether people were going to podium, but he might podium without a flat three. It was a pretty sick run. Yeah, let's have a look. So we see in the judging criteria, Everything is jack fluidity, obviously, through the roof. Line score could be the Achilles heel on this run for Carl, as he didn't quite pack it with as much stuff, and especially as much difficult stuff as we've seen from some of the other riders. Hard to know, though, what the judges are going to do with that. He was so fast, and the three threes up top. I mean, one, he was barely out of the gate. His tails were almost still <laughs> in the start area, and he was already uh, backwards in the air. Uh, so uh, another rider here making the judges work hard for it. Uh, absolutely pinned there for Carl Regner Eriksson. 
Woo, what a show we've got here in the ski men's field. Andorra Ar or Dino Arcalis in Andorra delivering the goods today for the tour. Incredible. I wonder if he was planning a flat three off that bottom one that we just saw Ross test a flip. And I wonder if the takeoff didn't end up being the way that he thought it was because he, he took a great angle for the landing and the two other people that have hit it, uh, Isaac and Ross, took not a great angle for the landing. They kind of landed in a double, which I still think was a little bit unintentional, but it made the takeoff work for them. So maybe he saw that and was like, I want to land in Tranny. I don't, I don't want to crash this after a bang a run but that takeoff then wasn't maybe as poppy as he was hoping and made it unflippable yeah and that's one of the really difficult things uh, about visual inspection is the takeoff shapes and angles are so hard to see from below ross i think really wanted to take off where he did because he wanted to do that flip and so it had a little bit more lip and obviously that worked out really well for ross um yeah who hard to say what was going on uh, there in chris or sorry in carl's head but he made it work and uh, he got down to the bottom in record time now just anxiously waiting to see what the judges are going to do with it oh yeah look at him he's he's looking at the screen there just nervous waiting to see he's got uh i mean three threes at the top we've seen it we've seen it work for for leo in the past 81 three three for carl so judges loving the freestyle element and uh and, and I, I gotta say probably the speed there fluidity so is that just behind isaac freeland Isaac still holding on to the podium for now. Calorie near the peak performance rider. Yeah, out only of point three back from Isaac. So the judges, you know, they've kind of uh, they've kind of painted themselves into a corner there with their numbers, but they're <laughs> making it work. They understand how it works far better than we do. Uh, but let's uh, let's go back up because we're not done. And if there's anybody who can come out of the cage swinging, it's this man. He is a veteran 2012 World Tour champion, um, second overall twice, and one of them quite recently, as, as recently as 17, and on the podium last year in Hakaba, where everybody thought it would be a freestyle winner. Rana Barkered is on course. Oh, he's going to see in this cross hill hit as well. Yes, he does. I love it. Classic Rainer Barkered, like you said, previous World Tour champion, couldn't get enough votes to be predicted to be on the podium today by the general public. But this kind of speed into that kind of terrain is going to do something for his score. He's just so solid. His technique is so perfect. The Dynastar rider out of Sweden, taking a similar line to uh, that we saw from, uh, was it Drew Tabke? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he and Drew often, you know, work together. They get along really well. They've both been on tour for a while. Finding the transition there, taking it deep, kind of similar uh, to, to what we saw from Drew and going across. Some of these hits that you can see, we saw it up top there and there on the wind lip at the bottom from Reyna. Really hard to get the pop on those sharp takeoff lips when you're going that fast. Exactly. Almost too fast. Oh, <laughs> Go a bit slower and pop more. <laughs> no, uh, don't. Please keep going yeah, that fast. no one that ever to Reyna. <laughs> So yeah, he's popping the ski off. Dynastar, a big supporter of the tour, Rene Barker. Hey, he's a fixture, almost. Uh, oh, well, yeah, not almost. He's he's kind of a, the a father figure to a lot of the young riders, especially the young Swedish riders. I talked, I saw him chatting with uh, Max Palm yesterday. You know, Max is Max is up and coming. He was our forerunner today, up and coming rider out of the Swedish scene, and Rene kind of the uh, the godfather of that Swedish free ride scene that's that, that still remains on the tour. So it's great for those young Swedes to have a guy like this to kind of bounce ideas off to help them through the process. Just seeing this replay, he was so fast through that whole section. I think that drone angle really did it justice. He barely turns. The only turns he did, I need a little bit less speed for this, otherwise I'm going to overshoot. And then just like goes as fast as you can, still catching Tranny. It's, just, it's incredible, the, the consistency from this guy over the last 10 years. Requalified every year, except one year that he, that he missed the last event because of a family member passing away. He has never needed a wild card. He's never got injured badly enough to not be able to ski and requalify. It's unbelievable. The mayor of Stomp Town, as he has become known for moves like that, so strong, so fast, and another product of this, I guess, the Scandinavian big mountain timing, uh, where you have to haul, yeah, and he on. certainly did, 79.33. The judges yeah. loving the pace, loving the line. Rene Barker at dropping himself into seventh job, spot man. right now, and uh, looking pretty good with, uh, with only yeah, one man yeah. to go. Rene guaranteed to be in the top 10. Yeah, and it's so tight in that 79 to 83 point range, you know, there's, uh, I think, four places between those four points. So really tied up there, tough day for the judges. But, uh, well, who have we got? We've got guaranteed podiums for uh, Ross Tester and, uh, and 
All right, well, let's go back up to the top. Wadagorak, he has one on the back. He was injured, and we lost him from the tour for the end of last year, but he is back, and he is so hungry for it. Wadagorak, he... I don't want to make any wild predictions, but I do predict a backflip in this run. Waddock's almost always good for one. He's so pinned, he's so aggressive in his skiing, and always with the original lines. And there you go, the Vadek Gorek backflip, taking it so deep, no trouble for this man. Getting a little bit inside that uphill hand, dropping a little bit, losing a bit of pressure off the downhill ski. Going into the Navarro, Danny Fernell double and finding a way out of it clean. Super fast there. That must be getting harder and harder to get through there. But Wadek managing it and he is still absolutely firing down the mountain. Nice bottom ear from there as well. I wonder if he was aiming for that other ear. I suspect he maybe thought that takeoff was taking him to the one that we saw a bunch of those other guys just hit, including Reina. But solid run from Vedic Gorek. We saw the uh, 2019 Fred World Tour champion Christopher Turdell go down on that same backflip at the top, and Vedic Gorek stomping it. He looks a bit disappointed. I think he must have missed that bottom hit that he was planning to do, but still a pretty sick run. Yeah, let's look at this. He just throws it upside down. Trying to four point, it looked like his one pole went way deeper into the snow and then finding his way through the section. He didn't hesitate there at all. That was so fast. And knowing how difficult that is, seeing what happened to Danny there, and he's such a great skier, that kind of gives, uh, almost gives that a little extra boost in my eyes of, of what Wadek was able to do by flowing through there. So look at his fluidity. Super That's high on fluidity. Classic Wadek Gorek. He's, uh, you know, I, I think he's going to be another one right in that, in that mix. He's <laughs> <laughs> the adrenaline just coursing through the Frenchman's veins there. So stoked to see Gorek back on tour uh, as he has clearly showed. So look at this so tight there in the top 10 right now. And I have a feeling we're going to see Wadek Gorek move into one of those spots. Yeah, so Mayol Olvela, the name that just slipped my mind before, guaranteed a podium now. Blake Marshall could get pushed off, might stay the Isaac Freeland's defending champion sitting in fourth right now. Calibrating the Ericsson fifth, so really solid top five. Will he be, I think, between fifth and tenth? But I'm not exactly sure where. That backflip was pretty dope. Yeah, the judges once again no, huh? deliberating, taking their time, making sure they crunch the numbers and get it right as uh, obviously big implications for the overall tour title in play right now, uh, as well as requalification for some of those athletes. So uh, you can see Lolo Best there, he's the head commissioner, and then the judges panel. We've got... Um, <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Bert <Bertie> Denevo. <laughs> yeah. Bertie and, and Dion, the, the Kiwi judge. Larry uh, Gauthier out of uh, out of Canada, Whistler, Canada, actually. And then our video judge is, uh, you know, he's, he's the, the French rider. William Cochet. Yeah, stoked to see him back in the mix as he's he's been kind of focusing on the four-star tour. And uh, to see him here with the Freeride World Tour on uh, on the video judge spot. That's why our uh, numbers, when when we get those uh, graphics, are so bang on. What a correct, the judges are taking their time here, Neil. Yeah, I think that they want to just be really sure about this. Like you said, we've seen so many different runs today, so many variations on this venue, yeah. so many different styles. You know, it's really it's tough, and I think you might be around that 79 to 83 point kind of, kind of line. I would probably say personally just below that, but I'm not sure, it, it's really tough. And then, you know, <laughs> yeah, within no, those like decimals of points out of a 100 point system, and they just want to be sure it's the last ride out of 19. Oh, it's so dur. Here we go, what did they Get think? 80 oh. flat for Wadek Gorak, right on the Get money, 80.00. That means Wadek Gorak drops himself into seventh position in the ski men. What a show that was. So a lot of uh, questions are now answered. A lot of cards are on the table. We have seen what the riders have. We know who's been uh, spending time on the trampoline. We know who's been spending time in the gym. Ross Tester, I said he came from the Isaac Freeland School. Well, technically perfect, freestyle packed. First run on the tour, 92-3-3. Maybe we'll call it the Ross Tester School from now on because he just won his first event on the Freeride World Tour. We go down the list. We see Tom Pfeiffer there, Jan Rossi's Tabke, Ray, Coops, Tao, and uh, and then we got uh, Christopher, Danny, and David uh, in the on the unfortunate position, not David, but of losing a ski and rounding out the bottom. So we're going to check in in the finish area with our men's champion here in Ordino Arcalis, Ross Tester.
Hey, Ross, congratulations on your win. First run on the Freeride World Tour, 90 points. So I want to talk to you about expectations, hopes, and dreams. What were you hoping for out of your first uh, your first stop here on the tour? Um, mainly just to have fun with it. Um, just land my run and just see how it goes from there. And usually that's how it works. So stoked it worked out. Unreal. Well, huge congratulations, Ross. We are all so stoked. I know everybody back home in North America is going to be frothing to see you take the top step. Congrats, Ross Tester, your champion here in Andorra. Stop number one on the Freeride World Tour. You indeed, young man. <laughs> First and 10,000 points to the overall ranking, just pipping Mayal Oliver and Blake Marshall, the Kiwi, the only Kiwi able to make it out of the five that were qualified for the ski men, taking third. Isaac Freeland defending World Tour champ fourth, and Kyle Rigner fifth. Yeah, so that's your overall standings right now, but we move on. These days go so fast. Our next category is going to be our snowboard women. The ladies have made their way up. They've watched the ski and snowboard men, or sorry, ski and uh, ski men and women drop, and now we're going to check in at where they finished off coming into the season. Snowboard women's category is stacked, defending champion Marinarti. But for the first time in a full year, we have another former tour champion back in the mix with Manuela Mandel. Yeah. And then a bunch of these women who have said, I'm going to say publicly, that they want a title. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Michaela Davis Meehan said it. Uh, we've got a new face as well, Katie Anderson and uh, Nuri Caston Baron, uh, the semi-local rider out of Spain and riding in the Pyrenees, but now moving out to Innsbruck. Anna Olova, injury wildcard coming back, and uh, Claire McGregor out of New Zealand. Yeah, rookie out of Region 1, winning the FWQ last year. Erica Vikander is going to be kicking things off for the 1,000th time. She <laughs> has the, the unlucky, or lucky, I guess, depending on how you look at it, distinction of during the bib draws, almost always drawing bib number one for the snowboard women's category. She was shaking her head about it last night. She's like, I don't understand why this keeps happening. Sometimes it works out well for her. Sometimes she doesn't love it. Um, but uh, you know, for Erica, it's it's worked out great because she keeps on requalifying third overall last year. She's such a solid rider. So did you bet on her? Did you guess on her? Peak performance fun bet. This is the only way you can get involved from home. So let's take a quick look at where the bets yeah. went. This is a bet on who you think is going to be on the podium. Neil, no surprises here, really. Marion Erti, the defending World Tour champion, 90% of people at bet thought that she would be on the podium, and understandably, she has just been ruling it lately. Erica Vikander, 53% of the vote. She got here last night. She got here super late, travel worries, and uh, not as much time to inspect, so probably a little bit tough for her. And then Michaela Davis, Davis Meehan, the young Australian rider, taking out third on the percentage of the podiums. Yeah, so as we said, votes are closed. You missed your chance to do it for this one, but we're hoping to do another event here in Ordino, Arcalis, Andorra later in the week or early next week. We're going to have a little bit of a storm come through. We're going to get some new snow. We're going to get what we like to call the FWT top up on the venues around here. And then we're going to kick things off. So Erica Vikander, as you said, Neil, travel nightmares. Absolute struggle street. It should took forever. You know, you have to get so many tests in order to move around the world right now, which is good because we're all safe and, and, and keeping things safe. But uh, Erica was uh, basically arrived in Andorra last night. And now first thing in the category, she is dropping in on the Port del Rat. 
from the top start, the Stephen Nally one as well. And it seemed like the starter was trying to tap her on the shoulder as she was leaving the start gate to tell her something. Had no time for it. I think she's been a little bit tired of the things that have been going off the travel. And she is just taking it out in her riding, which is the best place to take out that emotion because she was so fast for that top section. It's Stephen Nally in there and she just made it look easy. Yeah, Erica is kind of known for the flow in the NARF. She, she's, she's always got that smooth style and she's able to just transition between the turns back and forth to keep it like when it looks like you should be side slipping erica's not side slipping yeah nice and coming through the the middle section now uh making that crusty snow look easy and and popping away on down a couple little features in this uh, galley is similar to where i fought on yesterday and uh putting a nice grab in there as well putting the the indian again yeah aaron style one of the critical categories here and erica ticking those boxes as every single air she's hit in this lower and middle section has had the grab now coming across, you can see some old debris in that section. It has the potential to catch riders up in another one there. So Erica, Nar at the top, freestyle at the bottom. That is basically a textbook combo for getting it done on the Freeride World Tour. And Erica, you know, <laughs> I, I gotta give her a ton of credit. She rolled into, into the country last night super late. She was a little bit frazzled, kind of, you know, and then getting the bib draw, number one. but. She's really risen to the occasion here on this run. Yeah, you can see both the line and the air and style are right up there. You know, the fluidity control and technique are too, but like the, the parts that really stood out for me is the fact she got into that narrow at the top, made it look easy, put in four different grabs, I think, or four indie grabs in that run. Judge is going to like that. You know, she uh, didn't have that much time to scope either. So big ups on putting something together like that so quickly. Yeah, her, her strategy that she told me yesterday evening was that she wanted to keep it simple. She didn't have the time to put together a complicated, you know, run. And 75 points for Erica Vikander. That's a great start. Definitely a strong way for her to kick things off on the Freeride World Tour 21 season. All right, so we are back up to the top. Katie Anderson, young Canadian rider out of Fernie. Katie has been in a, 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 an interesting position in that she tied for first on the FWQ in 2019, but the count back didn't go her way. It went to Michelle Locke, who came to the tour last year. Katie tied for first again the, coming into this season, but the count back went to her. She grew up riding border cross, her technic uh, technically super sound rider and always fast. Yes, yeah, flashing this top section well, going a little bit further. Look, is left than most other people have. I guess she's got a feature lined up out there. Also nice to get fresh tracks when you're the third category of the day and a lot of people before you taking ear off that and making a way out. The look is left and the snow looks good out there. It does, and she went big off that. So Katie Anderson kind of staying true to her roots here with the speed, making short work of that top section. You can see her body, the middle of her body is right over the base of her board, right over the center. She never looks like she's getting thrown around. She's got such solid technique, she's a super strong rider. And going into this really exposed section here on the lookers left, Katie Anderson breaking new ground here. Getting into the gnar and airing out of it as well, finding some nice turns past the debris in the firmest No, She's still on her feet and that is going to be a good score. Yeah, that's a rowdy zone to go through and Katie definitely looking at something or finding something that we haven't seen anybody else move through. Katie Anderson clean to her feet. That's I think that's going to be a you know good challenge for yeah, Eric if I can't really score good there. Challenge. The 25 and a great way to start a Freeride World Tour career. The rookie's really been impressing me today, Neil. Absolutely. I think it's going to be contended for the hot seat. Yeah, well, I would think, yeah, for sure. Katie, look at the uh, look at the criteria. Lit up, green, green, green. Line oh score, really high. Aaron style, really high. She went big at the top, and then getting into this rugged zone at the bottom and airing out of it. Katie Anderson definitely making a case to put her on the podium. So she's nervously waiting. You know, she's a good Canadian kid, as we said from from Fernie. She's got that Kootenai Life sticker. On her, uh, on her helmet, Katie, excited, nervous, all of the things that come with a rookie campaign on the Freeride World Tour. But man, that was a great way to get things started. So excited for Katie. Great to see a Canadian flag in there. And she is, uh, well, I think the judges are gonna like that one. I'm pretty excited to see what they're gonna have to say about it. Judges taking their time to deliberate, to think about it. They've got their criteria. 
and each one has its own sort of set of numbers and its own pluses and minuses based on either things that went up or went down, went well or went poorly. Not much you can really say went poorly in that run for Katie Anderson. And I think the judges are going to, uh, yeah, there we go, 71-3-3 for Katie. So that's going to push her into second spot. Erica Vikander holding on to the hot seat so far, but we are just getting started here in the snowboard women's category. Yeah, take it back. Katie Anderson with a completely different line to Erica, but Erica with four grabs, I think, making the difference that Erin Style getting it done for her today, but awesome run from the rookie too. Yeah, there's 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 nothing to uh, nothing for her to not be proud of there. Um, but this is gonna be a nervous moment for Erica Vikander sitting in the hot seat. Marion Arty, she has run the table, she's won the tour three times, she's straight from basically straight from Jackson Hole where she was second at natural selection. Marion Herty is hungry and she never gets full. She never gets satisfied with winning. She's, she just wants to keep doing it. Yeah, that's right. Super styly right out of France. Like you say, multiple world tour winner really showing that she's got what it takes and coming into the steep now on the lookers right a little bit further towards where the, the guy skiers lines have been and, and getting into this bigger air. We saw some nice tricks off it today, putting a grab there herself and just stomping that heavy landing, a bit of a heavy head there. Yeah, Marion, this is what I kind of know her for. She took that line, she took the air, it looked like things were going to get wild, and then you can see the core tighten up and the legs engage, and they don't get wild. She just handles it. She's so strong and so balanced that when it looks like an, a rider should get thrown around, she doesn't. And that's classic Marionetti. Yeah, that's a coach's eye you're speaking with here, Derek. <laughs> Trained coach's eye. Nice ear off the bottom. That's classic Marion as well. Not many people have hit that one. I'm pretty sure we put a fresh landing in that. Only the second one to hit this. Ah, oh, just, just such enjoyable riding to watch. It just looks like she's having so much fun. Makes me want to go riding and just, how can you not like that? I think the judges are going to be stoked. Well, she stacked her run with features and, you know, none of them were small. She had, she, she, she knows how this criteria works and she can ride to it. Whether it's a, a product of strategy or good line choice or just purely because that's how she loves to ride. She does it and she does it well. Look at the line bar, Neil. Absolutely through the roof and Aaron style. I think that's a product of how big she went off all of those features. Yeah, like this solid hit. A lot of the guys' skiers came off that as well and she just made it look like it was nothing. Exactly what you said, like gets the core over the board and just doesn't make it look like she's ever going to crash. Very in control, very solid. And, and then hit that other area. I think it's the one just about to come up now that we didn't see any tracks off. <laughs> Yeah, and dead clean off that. You can see she put the back foot down just a little bit heavy on the back foot so that if she were to break through the crust, she's not going to get bucked and go over the bars. It's really strong run. I, I mean, you just can't say enough about this this young woman. She is three-time World Tour champion for a reason, and boy, we just saw the reason. Yeah, exactly. A little bit uh, out of breath at the moment. I think she's had a bit of a tough time lately with traveling and stuff. She also had a bit of a travel nightmare. Uh, uh, getting to and back from the state, so maybe that's what you should do to get into first place. Hot seat getting taken off a travel nightmare woman by a travel nightmare warrior. Marion RT, she is used to sitting in the hot seat and she is right back there for now. 84 points for the French veteran. 84 even for Marion RT. She's taken over the hot seat. Oh, Big sorry. hug there for uh, sorry. her and Erica. No apologies needed. The stoke is real. The vibes are high here at the Free Red World Tour. That's right, so we've got a good mixture of different countries in the women's snowboard today. We've got USA, France, Spain, Russia, <laughs> Austria, and Australia, as well as New Zealand. So splitting it all up for all over the place, and we've got our almost local rider here. Nuria Castan Baron, this young lady absolutely goes for it. She was second here last year. She wants to one up that and stand on the top of the podium. Nuria, we know when when we've seen her riding, she goes huge. She's a sender. We're waiting to see it on the tour. We've seen it a few times. We've seen her on the podium. Look at this though, Neil. Turns in that section. That is a challenging place to throw a board sideways and move through. Yeah, I'm really stoked to see all the Czech snowboarders have started from this. And she's getting into the absolute nah. This is where Mal Oliver win and sliding away through that so easily doubling off that and just making it look like it's an absolute pleasure to ride. And I can tell you that snow is a bit crusty in there and she is making light work of it. Yeah, that's that's awesome to see the snowboard women's uh, group here. Nuria 
going into that hourglass shoot that's so technical and then you've got the drop off the old um, the old avalanche crown at the end which is so tricky because the snow after that is rock hard so Nuria now making her way down line score going to be through the roof it's she needs to finish strong if she wants to uh, have a shot at kicking Marion out of the hot seat but a few little issues there, I think getting caught up in the cross hand going down for Nuria. So we'll see what this is going to do to the score, but so far looking good. An absolutely rowdy start for Nuria Castel Baron. Yeah, really nice. I love the top half of the line. I think that the bottom half of the line is going to let her score down a little bit because you saw how Marion finished so smoothly, so cleanly, so confidently. You know, she was out of breath. She was like really struggling by the time she got to the finish line. And Nuria charged at the top and had a cool bottom section too. But maybe a little bit more hesitant. This at the top, though, really, really sick. That's such a great view from the drone. You see her actually step out of the exit drop and then immediately over the uh, over the crown. So you can see on the judges' bars, control definitely down. And and as we watch the replay, Neil, I think that backs that up. Yeah, Nuria Caston Baron, not looking quite as stoked as I thought she might have been with that run. I mean, that top section was was really rad. Bottom section maybe knows that she put a hand down and had a bit of a control issue, and that's why she's coming at 61.33, sitting in fourth at the moment. Good level in the snowboard ladies today with a run like that, not being on the podium is, oof, it's tough. Yeah, so Freeride World Tour, you gotta be picture perfect if you wanna even be in the mix. And we've seen Katie, Erica, and Marion lay down flawless runs. Different zones, different lines, slightly different takes, but all of them dead clean. Nira not dead clean, and uh, it's reflected in the scores. Yeah, unlucky with a run like that. Yeah, so back up to the top, Anna Orlova. Anna, she's the Russian rider. She was a tour fixture, and then she was injured. We didn't get her back last year, but so pumped to see Anna Orlova back on the tour right now. She's always got a smooth, styly take. The way she rides just kind of stands out a little bit from the other riders. And now going over to the rider's left of that big castle formation and getting into something very, very steep up here, Neil. It's spicy up in there. It's real spicy. The veteran Russian rider, as you said, fought away through the FWQs, got into the FWT, did good, got injured, came back. Really stoked to have her back. She only found out she was back on the tour quite recently and airing off that one too cool different creative take on that because other people have taken it for the lookers left and she's taken it for, for the lookers right made a bit of a, a larger cliff face and a good little tranny where she landed yeah i wonder if we're starting to see the sun affect the snow a little bit because it kind of looks like anna getting slightly thrown around but man she is taking a bite out of this venue moving into this double that we saw a bunch of our skiers go through firing through it and is she going to come out clean almost just a little bit of a butt touch there but anna orlova getting big marks on the line score through that double yeah absolutely as you're saying though i think that the the control is going to take a big hit in the score because the, the lines have been so good today and other people put completely clean lines down so although that line score will be super high i think it might be tough for her to bump it up into enough of poverty in place with that only Yes, well, we will leave that to the judges to make that call, but Anna Orlova doing her best, going big, but as you said, a couple, couple spots where, uh, where control is, is an issue, potentially. Um, I'd like to just say it's such a pleasure to have Anna back on the tour. Great to have a representative from the Russian Federation out here on the Freeride World Tour. Truly an international affair here. That's right, coming back from injury, blowing up a knee a couple of years ago. And as you can see, yeah, the fluidity and control bar is down a little bit there. Yeah, line super high, watching her getting, making her way into this double, and she flashed it, but having a little trouble. Oh, you can see there as we got the closer shot from that camera angle, her board just kind of slipping, slipping out from under her. Um, so a bit of a butt touch, back touch there. Anna popping right up, and she actually hit it well, <laughs> well enough that I didn't even see it the first time, but the replay does not lie. No, no lies on the replay. William Cochet is going to be all over that. The video judge, our fifth judge, whose job it is to give those score judges indications, and then the real uh, score coming in at the end, the 52.33 for Anna, putting her in fifth at the moment. Uh, yeah, tough, tough gig in the women's snowboard field today. You've got to be pretty perfect. Yeah, uh, you know, we, we talked about this earlier, Neil, you and I, but um, this field is looking stacked. We've got a bunch of talent, and as we said, we've got riders who have who have really kind of come out and said, I want to take a title. You know, Marion's not going to give it up easily, though. She she loves this. She loves it, and uh, winning feels right to her. So 
can see she's tapped it's the course, so stoked on the sponsors. But here is one who would really like to take a piece out of uh, out of Marion's title hopes. Michaela Davis Meehan, the Aussie rider. She was second overall last year. She was first here, and it, she was the first one in a very long time to take an event win from Marion. And uh, she wants to do it again and again. Yeah, I'm sure she would love to do that again today. And taking the the lowest start, the start two, the first woman snowboarder to take that start today. So interested to see what she's got for here for us here today. The Australian rider riding for Sun God, the eyewear sponsor of the Freeride World Tour, making her way back to that same cliff that a few people have come off today and doing a good job of it. A little bit of a butt touch as well, similar to Anna Orlova's in the last run. But yeah, that crusty snow not really treating her that well. Yeah, and, and what, I, what I'm seeing from their riders is if you get the board sideways in the crust, it bounces you all over the place. Staying in the fall line, it's super committing and probably quite scary, uh, but it is the way to stay on your feet through there, and that's, that's a hard thing to do. Now, Michaela coming down above, wow, above some, some gana, serious gana. terrain. So she is looking to take a Big, big, big bite out of this uh, out of this port there at venue as she makes her way down. Is she going to put the board, the nose of the board, into the fall line and point it through this section? It is a pretty flat landing in there, so I almost hope that she doesn't. I think she might maybe be a little bit lost, but I guess if you get onto that ramp and come back off towards us, then it could work as a tranny, and it looks like Michaela is lining that up. Big ups to that girl. Wow, so she is on that incredibly exposed shelf. Now just looking to find her way. Look at the slough pouring off that. Michaela eyeing it up. Basically, the line the slough is taking is going to be the line that she takes as she moves over that, through that, and hopefully cleanly out of that. Yeah, it's the only way to get any kind of transition in your landing is to go exactly where that slough goes, just like you said, but getting closer and closer to the edge, and I think it's going to be a case of a bit of a bomb drop here. It looks like it's uh, soft in the landing. I think it's lucky that it is. All right, Michaela taking her time as this is a serious move and not one you want to rush into. Tricky yep. situation. Uh, she's got herself right down to the edge, now kind of eyeing it up. As you said, Neil, the, the transition there is a tricky one. It looks like she wants to get as low as she can before, like you said, she goes for the full bomb drop. Michaela davis Miam got herself into a bit of a pickle here. Bit of a pickle, having a good think about it and taking off. And a uh, right. bit of a knee to the maybe face, a little goggle adjustment, but like showing that she got legs of steel to deal with that. Really good think about it, and then deciding to take it on, putting it basically straight to a board. Not a perfect landing, but about as good as you can hope off something like that. Yeah, I, I have to admit, I didn't think we were going to see anybody go through that section today uh, in any category. Um, Michaela, though, uh, she found it, she went for it, took a minute to get through it, but I, I'm Really grateful that she took the time to do it because that was not something that needed to be rushed. Yeah, all surprises. But that top section was super nice. A little bit of a butt shake, but the grab in the air was good. That crusty snow catching her out. So the Sun God Rider, look at this spot that she was in. Absolute stone cold gnar. And then taking off pretty much from pure rock. It looks like she caught her, uh, caught her grill with her knee there. Hopefully the face is going to be all right. So line, I mean, you can't say enough about that line. Fluidity, <laughs> yeah. control, the technique, those ones down in the red. That's probably not going to be the score that Michaela was hoping for, but happy to see her at the bottom with a smile on her face. 21.67, yeah, so getting absolutely zapped for fluidity in that, and uh, that's going to gonna take her out of contention for the win today, but happy to see Michaela at the bottom, safe and sound. Yeah, that's right. Only two more riders to go. So Marion Atti, the defending champ, already guaranteed a podium place, but someone's got something to say about that in the start gate. Manuela Mandel, Austrian rider, 2018 overall world champion. This, uh, this rider, she doesn't mess around. She is, <laughs> I mean, she's a comfortable in the steeps. She's comfortable going big. She is coming back off an ankle injury. So she said she doesn't want to go too big and risk losing the rest of the season. So I think what we're going to hopefully see from Manuela is some smooth technical riding. That's right, steep and technical. This start number one suits her perfectly. Her kind of line anyway, I'd say she would have definitely started from this position even if her ankle was 100%, but it's taking an air into that as well. A little bit of a rescinding on her word about not going big off anything because she is just flashing this so far. 
My take on that is she found great transition there. So it wasn't a lot of impact. It was, uh, I mean, it was a huge error, but the landing, you watched it right away. It was nice and smooth, which is exactly what she needs to keep her ankle going. She's packing right now, packing this, uh, this run with features. Yeah, really smart riding from the veteran Austrian, like you said, 2018 champion. Manuela Mandel is like making sure that she's lining up her bottom section after maybe hearing that uh, Mikhail Davis Meehan go a bit lost and taking the same air as Marion RT and taking it, I think, even a little bit bigger. Really solid run from the Austrian so far. I think she was saying that she was uh, having a bit of a hard time scoping this venue and finding it almost mentally challenging, but no signs of that in her riding. No, this is a great return to form for Manuela Mandel and, and also a great reminder to all of us and all of you guys watching this at home, this is a tour champion. She's here to play, and she wants she wants that back. She may uh, she may speak about how things are challenging for her with the injury, but she's got it. She knows what it takes to win a title, and uh, and I think she just proved that once and for all to any doubters uh, with that run because that was extremely solid. Technique a little bit down on the judging bars. I'm a little bit surprised about that. Maybe a little bit slower in the top section than some of the other riders, but I uh, thought it was pretty good. Just seeing her coming off that vibram carpet there to to stop her from slipping and falling at any point. You didn't show any signs of slipping and falling on her way down on this run. Look at the stomp of that bottom air. Like you didn't leave the ground. Yeah, that was a clean, fast, fluid, smooth run with a challenging line. I think the judges are going to like that one. They got their work cut out for her, uh, or sorry, for them to score her. So Marian Erti sitting in the hot seat. Manuela Mandel looking to make her claim on it. Erica Vikander right now holding on to second spot. Is Manuela going to knock her out? Only time will tell. Uh, I feel good about that run. I think that was a great way to start. And, uh, you know, I think Marion may be feeling a little bit nervous, more nervous than she has in a while. Yeah, smile on Nona's face. Always a dangerous thing if you're sitting in the hot seat. <laughs> Manuela Mandel, part of the uh, FWT by train uh, project that we're doing, also with Nuri Castan Baron and myself, traveling to all of the Free Art World Tour stops only with the train. So I uh, traveled from Innsbruck to here through Zurich and Paris on the train, grabbed an electric rental car in Toulouse. And Manuel, Manuela Mandel sitting fourth at the moment with 69 plus 67. I uh, thought it was a pretty good run uh, myself. I uh, thought it might be in the podium contention, but uh, not today for Manu. A solid start to the season, but no podium for her. Yeah, so some interesting connotations there. Erica Vikander guaranteed a spot on the podium today, and uh, Katie Anderson, depending on what happens in this next run, could also be sitting on the podium. Mm. All right, rolling back up. The last woman in the snowboard field, Claire McGregor. She's a Kiwi, she's your homie. 2020, she was first overall in Region 1 FWQ. This young lady can shred. She got it done as a champion on the qualifying tour. Let's see what she does here on the Freeride World Tour. Coming into the lookers right part of the venue, and as we're saying, snow a little bit more wind affected and pressed than that point. So not treating Claire super well at the very start, but getting nice air off that and coming back through that rocky section towards the main Ginnara Ginnara in the middle of the venue. Yeah, Claire McGregor, she's she's excited. You know, I was, I've been speaking to her and she's just froth and she couldn't wait to get out on the face. She wanted to show her stuff. And another one here who I think is really in it for the passion, the joy. Look, turning that oh, into a triple, but just please stop there. catching up on the rocks there on the third one. That was a rowdy line choice. The first two went well, but you can see actually the exposed rock on the edge of the third one that she clipped. And yeah, letting shutting herself down before the next section of rocks. These riders are all experts at the uh, at the self-arrest, which is great for us. Uh, you know, hopefully mom and dad of Claire watching at home didn't have too much of a heart attack there. She's good, she's up, and she is back in the mix. Yeah, big shout out to mom and dad McGregor back in New Zealand. Claire getting it done on the way down here. One of the only two Kiwis able to make it out of the seven that were qualified. Uh, big shout out to all the others that couldn't. Jess Hodder, Sam Lee, Hank Billis, uh, Craig Murray, and uh, Jamisa Hampton not able to make it today. But uh, Claire and Blake holding it down for New Zealand. Unfortunately not going Claire's way, but uh, at least she's kitted out with a sweet black diamond airbag. Yeah, things were going pretty well, and then uh, she had a little bit of a jam up at the top, and then this this triple, uh, full props for the send. Let's just have a look here, Neil. Nice and clean, super fast, and then, oh. Yeah, something catches her on that last takeoff, eh? 
Yeah, there's a there's a bit of an offset rock that was sticking up that she just wasn't quite able to get around. So really glad to see Claire come out of that intact and all right. She's looking pretty bummed. Not the uh, debut on the Freeride World Tour that she was hoping for, but she's intact, ready to ride another day. And uh, we know that everyone in the snowboard women's field has the chops to take it on any given day. So we'll see, let's see, 36, 3, 3 for Claire. So that's gonna be a seventh spot for her. And we'll see her out again on the next stop of the tour. Yep, Kalina Gregor winding it up for the snowboard ladies. Looking back at the venue now, the one that I can't pronounce right, please help me out, Derek. The Port del Rat has given us a show for the women. Um, and really right back where we left off on the top with Marian Erti at 84. Erica Vikander dropping in second spot with a uh, heroic effort basically from her travel nightmares. And then young Canadian rookie Katie Anderson rounding out the top three. She's going to grab herself a medal and that is a great way to start your world tour career. Manuela Mandel kicking things off back from injury and looking good in fourth position there. Yeah, that's right. So it turns out you just need to have the worst travel plans, or not the plans, I think the plans were well planned, but the worst travel experience is possible, and then suddenly you do well in the comp. All right, let's check in with our winner today, Marion Erti, no stranger to the top spot on the podium. Marion, how did that run feel for you? You've been struggling a little bit, you said, getting with all the travel, but that looked like pretty classic Marion to me. Uh, you know, just uh, I try to have fun and even if the snow was not the, the perfect, uh, it was fun to ride, to be here with the friends, and I'm just happy to, to be here, you know. We are, we are super lucky to be outside with the friends, uh, sun, mountain, uh, happy. That's it. <laughs> well, thank you, Marion. It's a pleasure to see you ride, and congratulations for taking the win. I want to talk about that a little bit. A pleasure to be out here with your friends. The Free Ride World Tour family, it's such a its such a huge part of this. And I think Marian absolutely nailed it there. How good is it for all the riders from different countries, some of them are, that are in lockdown, some of them that can't ride and ski, to be able to be out here doing this together? Yeah, I mean, it's awesome, isn't it? Marian, French, all the uh, resorts in, in France are closed right now. So really cool to hear that they're appreciating. And just being outside on a sunny day with a good group of people, I mean, it's... It's hard not to like it. Uh, we really appreciate the places that are open. We really appreciate what the Arkley's for having us and, and hosting us. All right, so snowboard women wrapped up. We are moving on to the snowboard men. This field absolutely stacked. Let's take a look at what we've got in store in the snowboard men's field. Snowboard man, well, Nils Mindnick, he's the champion, reigning champion, but we know we have Victor De La Rue in the mix, we, he, another former champion, but look at this start list. It is absolutely stacked. I, I have no idea where this is gonna go. Oh, this is so packed. I mean, Gigi Roof, he, he can't be here today. He got injured just after natural selection, unfortunately, but I think that any other rider here could take it out today. Uh, really dominated by, by American and French riders. Also got Cody Bramall, the half British, half Swedish rider in there too. And uh, Hugo Serra. So yeah, it's really solid list of people that have been competing all over the world. Interesting combination of French riders competing in America on the qualifiers and, and the other way around as well. Camille Arnaud, he's back, wild-carded onto the tour. And uh, 
really high level expected here today is, is one of the strongest snowboard fields I think I've seen in the guys. All right, so let's take a look at what you thought was going to happen. Victor De La Rue, this is, remember, a percentage of you who in their fun bet thought these riders would land on the podium. Victor De La Rue, 89% of you thought he would end up on the podium. Sammy Lupke, 57. You're sleeping on Nils Midnick. This is the tour champion. Only 44% of you think he's going to be on the podium. I don't know if you guys watched him at Natural Selection. The guy is a snowboard god. I would put him at a very high percentage chance of landing himself on the podium. But there are so many good riders here. I really don't think there are any guarantees with any of these guys, as everybody wants a piece of it. There's only three spots on any given podium, and Nils Mindig wants it. Another one with, with the travel nightmares, hey, Neil? Yeah, that's right. Maybe the people who were voting knew that somehow his board bag didn't arrive, and he was wearing a whole bunch of borrowed stuff that is, in fact, by jacket and pants. I think it's your helmet, Derek, and he's got all sorts of other borrowed stuff on as well. Yeah, but it's not going to affect him. Niels didn't, he didn't even let it slow him down when he was roaming around the hotel looking for gear. He got boards, he got all the stuff. He, he was fine with it. He's like, I don't, I'm just here to ride. I want to have a good time. Let's see what he can do on borrowed everything. Yep, borrowed board, borrowed bindings, borrowed boots, and also so far borrowed slaying from himself with a big three just making it look so casual. Oh, uh, and that's a risky move. The judges love that kind of thing up high on the face. So Nils right now making short work of it. He's so smooth. That's, you know, one of the things that I love about his riding. Grab there, tweaking it out, always making it look stylish. He's such a fun rider to watch. That's right. Getting here a little bit later than some other riders as well, not having as much time to scope and opting some really fun transfer ears out here on the sunny side. It's probably getting a bit slushier over this side by the time this time of the day. And Neil's popping off that to do a double on purpose this time, maybe in comparison to some of the other riders, and popping another three off that too. How many tricks can you fit in one run? Man, the, the transfer into the chute with the airplane turn to line him up dead perfectly with the fall line. And then the back three at the bottom, Nils really putting a stamp on this snowboard men's category, getting it started in exactly the way we were hoping. Uh, I mean, wow, that's just such a great way to start things off. Something I have noticed though is a lot of competitors that have gone to the lookers right side of the venue haven't done as well. The line score is affected, but somehow it seemed to transfer in some of the other categories as well. So Niels Mindnick, I'm not sure if that's going to be reflected on him as well, because I really like this run. What a smooth backside three. Yeah, so uh, nailed it, Neil. You absolutely nailed it. The line score low, everything else looking pretty high. So Nils, uh, I, I do wonder if that was a bit of a product of not having a ton of time to scope. You know, he's, he kind of rolled in super late. He didn't have his gear. So sometimes when you're in that situation, in that position, your mind's elsewhere and not 100% focused. But a 76-67, that's a strong start and a pretty good way, I feel like, to kick this category off from a guy who was uh, in Frazzletown only 12 hours, 12 short hours ago. Razzletown making his way back into Funtown. All right, well, let's go back up from uh, Frazzletown to basically the unfazable. Sammy Lubke is a multi-time champion on the Bec de Ross. He's a multi-time tour champion. Nothing really gets him down. Nothing gets him uh, worked up. He's always kind of calm, cool, and collected. And then he kicks out of the start gate, and he's just got his style. You could you could be two chairlifts away across the resort and see him riding a face and know it was Sammy. Yeah, this amazing style, really smooth and confident. Like he takes that top air, similar to Niels, and also heading out, heading out to the lookers right-hand side of the venue. Hopefully the snow has softened up a bit because uh, took down some riders earlier on, but Sammy not one to be taken down easy with hits like that. Yeah, big back three there for Sammy. A little bit of a butt touch on underneath, and he is in that section where we saw earlier skiers not even leaving a track. He aired out of our sight there, and it looks like a bit of a backspin, unfortunately, for Sammy. I was uh, yeah, looking... Yeah, he got caught up on the landing there. I think it wasn't quite the transition he was looking for, and a board dug and body hit the ground. I think it's going to be really bad for the control of the judging criteria. Yeah, that's unfortunate for Sammy as he was going well. He had that high consequence three at the top, and now coming in, same feature that we saw, Nils Midnick with that surgical airplane turn. Sammy getting bucked again. Unfortunately, not his day, Sammy Lubke, but it won't phase him, we know that. No, that's right, he's a positive guy and he's a great snowboarder. Oh, well, Sammy, what's he got up his sleeve at the bottom here? Oh, nice the hand plant. Hand plant. <laughs> really dope, really dope, dude. I like it a lot. Sammy Lubke, never a stranger to having fun and putting his own signature style stamp on everything.
<laughs> just like Christopher Tudell, he's one of the only guys that can smile after a crashed run, just loves snowboarding, and hopefully he's going to get another chance next week as we're hoping to have another competition here. Not on the same face, hopefully. Yeah, maybe. A lot of balls. <laughs> There's lots of maybes in play right now. So, oh yeah, you just saw it there. He, he, he exactly as you said, Neil. He got caught up in the crust, and uh, it basically your board at that point acts like a tripwire. Your feet stop, your body keeps going, you get kicked, and uh, well, that's that's it. You can see the criteria: fluidity and control way down for Sammy. But huge props for that. Yeah. I absolutely love that. <laughs> I liked that's it just a lot. the spirit of snowboarding right yeah. there encompassed in a, in a moment. So Sammy scored. Not going to be what he was hoping for. 45-3-3. And uh, the king of Frazzletown nails Min Nick holding on to the top spot so far, but hey, still plenty of place, talent right? waiting up there to have their say on this. So we've already seen our reigning champion drop. We have the champion before that, Victor De La Rue. Victor is a threat in anything. Freestyle, big mountain. We've heard from uh, some of his French compatriots that Victor's tastes have ranged more to the uphill lately than ah, the yes. downhill. He's loving the touring, the split boarding, uh, getting, into the, uh, getting into the mix with the climbing, the mountaineering, the alpinism, you know, maybe taking a page out of his older brother's book. He's a, a, a well-known alpinist on the snowboard, but Victor is not here today for alpinism. He's here to bring himself back into the top, uh, into the conversation for a Freeride World Tour Snowboard Men's Champion. Yeah, that's right. I'm sure he didn't not like the hike to the ridge. That ridge hike, spicy one up to the top start gate. Looking pretty focused now, but uh, yeah, I think that he's got something in store for us today. He's uh, come straight from natural selection and he's fired up. He's riding good. Uh, apparently lost his pass for a little while due to ducking a rope while he was over there, but uh, you know, it's just the same as being in France with the lifts are closed. Maybe he's wanted to feel more at home. Yeah, tough transition sometimes for the European riders into the, uh, particularly the American scene where the rules are, I'd say, a little bit more rigid. Um, so yeah, Victor suffering from that, but he's he's the kind of guy who will it'll just slough right off his back, and he's able to to focus, refocus, and uh, and take on the task at hand. And, and the task at hand today is the Port del Rat here in, in Ordino Arcalis in Andorra. Look at these shots from the top. Love to see the spectacular Pyrenees showcase like this. It's such a great place for free ride. Kind of has become the the southern European home for it for me. And it just feels right to see these guys dropping off the summit. Yeah, that's right. Well, this is his home, uh, home range. He's from the Pyrenees, just like you're saying, Derek. And uh, so, so fast charging into the top section, the Black Diamond Rider out of France, the French Pyrenees, like we're in the Andorran Pyrenees here, and then wicked three off the top. Front three, that's a bold move. I, I Okay, we're seeing his first turn. He's straight line basically <laughs> across court, the whole first part, and already two 360s in, and absolutely flying. Victor De La Rue making a case here. Maybe he's taking a page out of the Swedish skiers book, the faster the better, and it worked out for those guys. Now, interesting line here, kind of catching side hill on that Victor. Wow. Yeah, really creative and different there. Super fast down the bottom too. Uh, two front threes and a back three, I believe it was. Get into freestyle in the Andorra face. Yeah, really freestyle-y. Uh, a totally different take on this face using the, the rider's right side of that boundary couloir. Finding, again, uh, I'm, I'm consistently amazed at these guys' ability to find stuff this late in the game that nobody else has done. Yeah. Yeah, so you see that. Front three there, stomping it, getting the grab. Line a bit down again. And then back three, no stranger to freestyle. We've seen three threes win comps in Andorra multiple times before. Yeah, so this is going to be really interesting because Nils had, I would say, a, a little bit of a slower run down the middle of this venue. Victor was extremely fast with the three threes, but on a mellower, arguably a mellower zone. So 71, 6, 7 for Victor. I feel like we, we kind of are on that really good riding on a slightly mellower line. Right now, good enough for Victor to drop himself into second place. I think he'd be happy with that. It's a pretty great way to start the season. Well, we had straight on back up to the top. Sun God rider Michael Mon 
This guy is a rookie on the tour. He took the title on the FWQ in North America in 2020. I was talking to his old coach, Brendan Metzler. He said, Michael rides better in competition than he does when he's free riding. He's got that, he's got that beast that just sits inside the cage in his chest. And then when he pushes out of the start gate, the beast comes out and Michael loves to get after it. So pretty excited to see him out here. He's a rookie uh, on the free ride world tour, but man, such a strong rider. He's been rallying around with um, with Hugo, Sarah, and, and some of the other Frenchies enjoying Europe with uh, with Ray Del Mar there. Or, um, anyway, Michael is on course right now and kicking off his campaign here as a rookie into the hourglass, Neil. Oh, this, I love this feature. It just looks so much fun, and people have had so many creative takes on it so far today. Uh, got Michael Moore just earing out of the bottom there and uh, getting quite quickly through here as well. I think one of the first snowboarders we've seen go on this side of the venue at all. Yeah, and we saw skiers getting rewarded for going down this side. It's definitely steeper. It's definitely uh, has lots of, and Michael now into the guts of it, a big double there. Michael Mon, man, he may be a rookie, but he is riding like a tour veteran right down the middle. The judges love it. Oh, taking that double as a single. This kid is on fire right now and really staking his claim to be here. Not just be here on the tour as a lot of rookies want to do, but similar maybe to what we saw with Ross Tester. Uh, I'm a rookie, but I'm here to win. That's right, the Sun God Rider just lighting it up with his first ever run on the World Tour and so different to the other riders so far in the men's snowboard category. And you can see it's been rewarded in the judging criteria. Line fluidity and control in particular, super high, more technical, really fast. I think this is going to be a strong challenger for the hot seat. Yeah, I think so too. You can see he's got the grab there. Coming out of the double, he got his board sideways, but not putting him in a position, tweaking, like, the, the criteria lit up. Michael up, Mon, guys? he is happy. Man, he's waving at the folks at home. Pumped to put that down as his as his first free ride world tour run. I have a feeling the judges are gonna really like yeah, that. Yeah, a lot of features. A lot of features and hit well, you know, at speed with good landings, awesome. style in the watching. air. Yeah, <laughs> that was awesome, says Michael. Yeah, it was, man. I, I enjoyed watching it a lot. I'm sure it was a lot of fun to do. Are you gonna beat Niels Midnick and in your first rookie run on the free ride world tour get to spend some time in the hot seat let's just take a second to digest yeah. what you just said this is a young kid who's grown up watching probably watching nils uh in and victor you know in snowboard movies and, and watching sammy, sammy win the <laughs> yeah. world tour are you going to beat nils Minnick with your run and uh, you know, probably yes. What's that got to feel like for this young kid? Man, he is so stoked. Now, we're just waiting anxiously. He's grinning away because he <laughs> knows he just threw down a great run. Michael Mon, wow. What a what a great way to kick things off. He's he's just frothing right now. So stoked. And and his coach's words proven true there. Comp monster. He let the beast out of the cage, <laughs> and, and the beast took over. You know, sometimes you need another driver, oh, yeah, and when, when, the, when the comp monster took over oh, driving for Michael Mon, it drove very well. Oh, yeah. Just standing there, hand on board, hand on hip, talking about how fun it was. I mean, it's exactly oh, what he's yeah. hoping for when he's standing in the start gate. This, this wave of euphoria, like, I did my run, it went as planned, I'm not bad at visual inspections. You know, it's, it's tough for, like, North American riders coming to the World Tour. They don't usually do many visual inspections. And he is sitting in third right now, Michael Moore in 71-3-3. Super nice line from the rookie rider. All right, so taking us back up in the glorious Andorran Pyrenees, Ordino Arcalis delivering the goods here. Cody Bramwell in the start gate. He's got the Union Jack on the helmet. This young man, like you said, he's a diverse background, Swedish parentage, British parentage, spends half his summer in Greece. Um, we saw him last year blow some minds in Fieberbrunn. He did the channel gap that we've never seen anyone do on a snowboard. He is always a threat and just got the spirit of it. He's, he's, he's a free rider at heart. Yeah, absolutely, with mad style. Really love to watch and ride with this guy. Perfect Swedish, perfect English. Perfect riding coming up to this big old top hit and a backflip. First time from a snowboarder we've seen it off that. And it just stomps it perfectly. What a wildcat. Straight to bolts there for Cody. Above that exposure, you can't say enough about doing that 
there. That's such a scary place to do it. And he absolutely greased it. Now coming into this lower section, Cody is on fire and finding another new line. Yeah, <laughs> pre ollieing that so far back. Ollieing over what could be a double as a single with completely blind takeoff and just pointing it into the finish line. How is that for another unique run, Derek? What a tough day to be a judge. Oh, this venue is just delivering the goods time after time after time. Cody Bramwell, let's, let's go through this because there was a lot to unpack here. I can't believe how hard he stomped that. On a cut-up landing, well, skiers were crashing, on a snowboard. The Cody double Bram. shifty there. <laughs> Air and style almost maxed out. Yeah, so smooth, so stylish. And it, you sat at the top, the guy's just oozing style all the time. Really happy to see Cody put that down. The, the judges are going to love that. They've been loving. Uh, looks like we've already got a score in <laughs> at 85 there for Cody Bramwell, moving himself into the hot seat. I'm not sure if he knows. That may have been a bit of a technical glitch on our screen. But we know, you know, and now he knows. There it is. There's the moment where he just learned. 85 points. So Nils popped, bumped out of the hot seat by Cody Bramwell. He's another guy who hasn't won one, but we're kind of waiting to see when he will. And this may be the day. Maybe, maybe not. Still a lot of good riders to go, but Cody now in the hot seat, just hoping he's going to be able to hold on to it. Yeah, he's so solid. Really stoked for this young man to put down such a run. Above Nielsman in Victor De La Rue. How must that feel? Yeah, that's unbelievable for a young guy like that to just be sitting in that <laughs> position. He's mind blown. Absolutely awesome. mind blown. Great run there, Cody Bramwell. All right, well, speaking of great runs, I'm so excited to see this guy back on tour. French rider, Camille Armand, fifth overall in 2016, or 20, and uh, third place here in Andorra that same year. He was a, he was a fixture on the Freeride World Tour. He's been off, he's been pursuing film projects, but he's back as a wild card. And man, he has been throwing down this year. Charging into the steep shaky section on the look is right. Getting to the shade now. Hopefully that isn't affecting the snow, but it doesn't look like it's affecting his riding. And also going for the backflip, but under rotating. How did he land back on his feet there? What, did he just like do a front punch, front flip, and land straight back on his snowboard? Backflip, front flip. It looked like he found the only spot there where his board didn't penetrate the snow at all. He just <sighs> bounced. But being the cat that he is, he bounced straight into a front flip and back on his board. Uh, I'd love to say I hope the judges didn't notice that, but maybe they'll count it as two flips. Um, but that was an unbelievable backflip there for Camille Armand. Now coming into this big section. Wow! Yeah, A-Pol in it. <laughs> Him and Andrew Pollard, the only two people to hit that air, just greasing it. Like, he knew exactly where he was going. I don't know how people line stuff up like that. They're so blind. This is a rollover takeoff. You have to pre ollie and stop in the... Stomping the snow out of that. Yeah, so really unfortunate that Cammy went down on that backflip because that run was really, really solid. Yeah, you can see him just get absolutely ejected, uh, but came out of it like a warrior. And let's take a look at this lower section. Popping in a different spot to a -Pol. And uh, yeah, little celebration on the way out there. We're stoked on that one. But yeah, only two people to hit that cliff. That's interesting for me. It's pretty nice training on it. Aaron style, really high technique, line pretty good. Unfortunately, with that buck on control, 51-6-7 for Camille Armand. So not going to be a podium contender today. Looking at fifth spot right now with, uh, with a couple more riders to go. But again, you know, we've kind of been saying it all day, cards on the table. He's here for serious business. And if we see more flips like that, which kind of his trademark, uh, we're going to see we're going to see quite a show on the tour from that French rider. Well, as we take in the glory of the Pyrenees, we have another young man out of the U.S., Griffin, sorry, <laughs> Blake Moeller. Griffin Moeller's younger brother. Blake started free riding by doing the free ride world qualifying tour and ran the table. First, 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 and first overall. That was his first time free riding. This kid is the joy and passion of snowboarding personified in a human. He loves it, he lives for it, and it shows in his riding. I can't wait to see what Blake's got for us on uh, on his tour debut. Yeah, same. So much fun to ride with, just popping and flipping off everything. So is that what we're going to see here as well? 
Yes, it is. Laid up backflip, hand down, but stomping it. Really nice one there. I can't believe we've seen three snowboarders flip that now. It is not an easy thing to flip. Coming straight into a double in the gnarly section. Yeah, and that couldn't have been easy mentally for him after watching Kami Armand go down, taking that double so clean. Look how centered he is over the board. Never looks rattled. He's got he's got the style, but also just Tripling. pinpoint technique with that triple. Oh man, we knew, you know we all kind of hoped for this. And talking again to, to Brendan Metzler, Blake's coach, he he said he's got it. He's a he's unknown so far among a lot of the European snowboarders, but again in North America, this guy, we know what he's got, especially after watching him just run the table in the qualifiers and riding with him out here. Well, there you have it. Blake yeah, you Moeller said he was your dark horse. <laughs> laying down his claim. He wants it, and just it just looks like so much fun. He's such a balanced rider. Look at the Boom, Look at the categories. Boom. No trouble shutting down that crusty snow either. And this, he turns it into a triple. One, two, three, stomps it, and just shuts down a tiny bit of speed before he goes off two more hits, man. It was almost a femtuple. Yeah, and, and managing to redirect just, just enough to keep it smooth and fluid. How'd your bottom Now, go? Blake, you know, he's just chatting away. Like, he just yeah. loves it so much. He likes being in the mix with the rest of the crew. Uh, now waiting on scores, but I think what we can say for sure is Blake Moeller is here. Oh, yeah. As you're saying, younger brother to Griffin Moeller, a uh, free-eyed will to a skier in the past, and now his brother here, Blake, on a snowboard. It's a very talented family. Yeah, absolutely. Shout out to uh, to parents, to Shannon Moeller, a member of the IFSA Board of Directors, volunteering her time to keep free ride flowing in North America. But right now, she's a free ride parent. She's a proud parent watching her son absolutely crush it in his very first Freeride World Tour comp totally here in Ordino Arcalis. Just like, oh, chatting away right now um, with uh, with the man in the hot seat, Cody Bramwell. Cody and Blake have been shredding together a bunch. And I, I think know, it's one of the I? coolest things about the tour is these top-notch riders, super talented, super driven riders from all over the world. They get to come together and ride, and collectively the level comes way up. Oh, it's so much fun to be a part of, you know, like you think that they might be competitive and not sharing secrets and not helping each other ride and push each other and suggest fun things to do, but that's exactly what they're doing, you know. You've got these fun crews riding around, just shredding and being like, oh, I'm going to try this, oh, that, oh, I'm going to try that, you know. People doing things they've never done before just because they're competitors who are actually their buddies are like, encouraging them and pushing them and it's like one of the best things about the world tour for me so check it out the judges really deliberating putting some time in on this one cody's run was spectacular blake's run also spectacular you cannot deny me this run you cannot deny me this was a good run everybody all the boys back home mom dad let's go Ah, oh, the stoke i love it he's just so fired up and uh, Cody, for sure, nervous moments here, sitting in the Dynastar hot seat, waiting to see what the judges decide to do with Blake's run. Tick, tick, tick. What are they going to say? Yeah, I mean, oh, oh, 83! Blake Muller sitting in second in his first ever free ride wheel tour comp just behind his buddy Cody. What a day. What a day for the young shredders. So, yeah, interesting. You know, stoked to see. I'm sure Blake's going to be pretty pumped with that. Cody, a huge relief, because right now, guaranteed to be on the podium, actually guaranteed to be in the top two, as we only have one man left up top. Yeah, that's right. I think the difference for me, man, was the hand down on that backflip at the top. Must have been what changed it. It was so close. Yeah, Cody was dead clean at the top. Blake, a tiny blip, but we're moving on, because this guy, he has a chance to take it all home to Hugo Serra. Hugo Serra, French rider, 2020 first overall in the FWQ Europe Oceania, but he did it entirely in North America. He said he wanted to ride over there to experience the difference between the two different systems. Yeah, that's right. Blake getting injury work after winning the North American season injured last year. Hugo winning it last year. Got a lot of product coming out of the North American FWQ like this dude. Back three off that perfect landing. Stomp from Hugo, what's he got up next? High up on the face, that's a high risk maneuver. Definitely gonna be rewarded from the judges. He's, uh, he's Hugo, way taller than a lot of the other riders. So that can be an advantage and a disadvantage. He's got the long legs, so lots to, uh, lots to work with when he's absorbing airs, but also a higher center of mass. So easier to get flipped over, kicked around, knocked down. Not seeming to bother him right now though. Seems to be uh, working out for Hugo. Yeah, popping off that as well. 
and landing in a carve. That is like a mastery of snowboard technique. Landing on edge, arcing around before he crashed into that rock. That was clean, smooth, fluid, and ultra fast for Hugo. Yeah, smile on his face. Yeah, Cody. <laughs> yeah stoked for Cody as well. That's exactly what we're talking about, the companionship in the World Tour. This, these snowboard guys this year especially are so stoked for each other. So look at that, way high up on the face with that three. Like I said before, high risk move. And then check this out, the early takeoff, tweaking out the mute. Like, that kind of stuff, it comes from experience, but also y you're rolling the dice and betting on yourself that it's gonna work. Yeah, and that bet has come off. He just backed himself and stomped it. I mean, really, really sick run, but I don't know if it's gonna trouble Blake or Cody. Yeah, I think you're right. You can see there on the on the judges' criteria the one main difference, the primary difference, the line, right? Those guys with that huge air at the top and adding the flip. So line score and air and style. When you jack those two up high on the face, it's hard to catch up from that. I don't want to say deficit because Hugo also had a great run. But if we're talking about first or second, no, here we go. The judges have spoken. 64, 67 for Hugo Serra. That's going to be sixth, sixth spot for Hugo, so what a show. You know, Neil, we talked about it before, the snowboard men's field absolutely stacked, and it has lived up to and exceeded my hopes, dreams, and expectations by a mile. Yeah, what a show today. Big ups to everyone so far that has put down a run, because it has been such a pleasure to watch. Like we're saying, the snow conditions have been a little bit challenging, but no problem for these pro athletes just getting it done. All right, so little recap here. Cody Bramwell, the Swedish Brit, the British Swede, taking it out. Blake Moeller, rookie on the tour, but number one in our hearts. Blake Moeller, second. And Nils on borrowed everything, rounding out the podium with the top three. Victor De La Rue, Michael Mon, first go on the Free Ride World Tour in the top five. Hugo Serra, Camille Armand, Sammy Lubke, both of those guys going down. And Gigi Roof, as we said, not able to show up here, but we're hoping to see him again in Fieberbrunn. So what a show from these guys. Man, this snowboard men's field. Actually, we've seen, I mean, four categories and every one of them blew the doors off. Yeah, amazing. Fourth, Victor De La Rue with a sick run like that. The Black Diamond Rider, who was a Freeride World Tour champion two years ago. It's just, yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy stuff, man. All right, let's go down into the finish area and check in with today's snowboard men's winner, Cody Brownwell. What a run that was. Can you run us through top to bottom what was going through your mind, how that felt for you? Oh, man, yeah, I am just, yeah, I'm overwhelmed. I can't believe this is actually happening. Man, yeah, <laughs> I'm so stoked. But, yeah, like that back here, I've been eyeing that all day, and I talked to, like, David Lee and, like, the winner of Hedvig from uh, the women's as well, and she's just like, yeah, just go for it. Like, it's, it's easy. And then, yeah, it worked out. Like, got around perfectly, and then the that little weird gap at the end and that worked out as well yeah i'm just i'm lost for words so what you're up there in the start gate you're getting ready for this run what were your concerns i mean were you nervous about that flip because that was definitely pretty badass and to have seen you know we saw cammy go down on it but you were straight to bolts on that yeah i was yeah i was definitely worried how heavy it's going to be because like obviously it's not that much power in the landing so i was like i gotta like just be as strong as possible in the landing and like i came around perfect and it just it worked out yeah all right, so we've kind of been waiting for this moment. You've been on the tour last year. You blew our minds in Fieberburn with the channel gap. This is your first win on the Freeride World Tour. What does that mean to you, Cody? Oh my God, I've been like wanting this for so long. I, I can't even believe it right now. What, the, it's one, for, what? Yeah, <laughs> I'm, yeah, I can't believe it, man. <laughs> Sick, all right, and, and then just kind of, on, I guess on top of that, I want to add who you won against this field is so stacked with talent. Guys that you've probably been watching their film parts for, for your whole life. What does that feel like to be standing, you know, in this circle with, with those guys? It's insane. Like every rider here could like win on any given day. So it's like, yeah, it's so stacked stacked. And like like I said, I've been watching like snowboarding like all my life and seeing these crazy video parts and like I'm like competing against them. It's it's unreal, eh? It's unreal. Well, Cody, I, I want to thank you for your time in this interview and also a humongous congratulations. First World Tour victory. I have a feeling it's not going to be your last. You just stamped your claim. You're also leading the tour right now. Pretty exciting <laughs> stuff from Cody Bramwell. Uh, huge thanks to all the snowboard men. That was everything and more. What a show we've had today.
So let's take a look. This is our standings overall right now. They're going to look uh, awfully similar to the uh, to the standings that we saw from the event. Cody Bramwell now leading the tour. He's second year on tour. Blake Moore, Blake Moeller, rookie in second overall. Nils Midnick, he's fine in third. He knows how to get back into the mix. And uh, you know, when he's riding on his own board and boots, he'll probably have something to say. Victor De La Rue, Michael Mon, Hugo Serra. This is it. This field is so strong. I cannot wait for the next event to see these guys throw down again. Snowboard men right now in a great place. This is it. This field is so strong. I cannot wait for these guys throw down again. Snowboard men right now. All right, so we are moving on. The competition is done. Stay tuned, though, because we are going to be showing you our podium ceremonies, everything coming up next. Right now, I'm sitting here in the booth with young, up-and-coming peak performance rider out of Sweden but living in France, Max Palm. Welcome. Hello. All right, so, Max, you are a forerunner today, but you're still a junior. I, I, wanted, to, I wanted to talk to you and get, some, get your take on what it means to you as a young rider to stand in that start gate. Oh, it's so cool and like I'm so lucky to be able to do that and to see all the biggest name in the free ride world and just be able to ride the same face as them and it was so cool. <laughs> <laughs> now you your forerun looked different than a lot of other foreruns. I mean you really went for it and we kind of put it down to the, the junior stoke. You had a big air in there and then a backflip at the bottom. What were you thinking in the start gate? Were, were you planning on doing that flip and all those airs or were you did that just come in the moment? Uh, all the air I was I had planned but then I wanted to do a chill run but then jump a little bit and then when I was on the wind lip at the bottom it was like easier to do a backflip than a straight jump so I did a little backflip. <laughs> Awesome. Well, Max, so stoked to hear you. Uh, we're going to take a look at our ski men's winner here, Ross Tester, rookie on the Freeride World Tour, something I'm sure you're going to be very soon. Absolutely blew the socks off of everybody on his very first tour run. FWQ Tour in Region 2 last year. Ross got a great pedigree. He kind of comes from, I think, Neil, the Isaac Freeland School of Skiing. Technically super solid. All right, so we have this run right now. <laughs> Ross Tester, gold medal. Max, were you watching this run? Yeah. What did you think? Tell the, us, kind of run it through you uh, from an athlete's perspective. The tree at the top was just insane. And then a big cliff here. Yeah, super Whoa. different take on that double than we saw. We saw Danny Fornell Pratt and Imar Navarro go through that direction, but Ross just taking it in a totally different direction. And right now, you kind of had that sense that, that he was building towards something. Ross is not here to mess around. What a way to start as a rookie. So have a look at this one. Whoa, it was huge. Huge backflip, and he the way he found that piece of the lip, we saw a lot of other guys hit that, uh, that feature, but Ross took it from just a slightly different angle. Yeah. The game up in your forehand. What, how difficult do you think that was for him to do that that way? I don't know because he is on the next level. He's so good. <laughs> <laughs> he is. He, I mean, this is why he's a tour rider. And even as a rookie, every single rookie here has earned their way onto this tour. And Ross Tester proving that beyond a shadow of a doubt. So 100%. exciting to see him. So Max. Things are going well so far in the junior tour. You were at the Verbier Free Ride Week. Tell us about how that went. Oh, it went super good. I did a nice run and I took it home in the first place. So that's nice to start the season like that. Yeah, for sure. And what's your next move? Where Where are you off to after Ordino Arcalis? Uh, after Dino, we have uh, Nanda in uh, next uh, weekend. So if I'm able to make it, I will go there. And otherwise, it's Verbier and then the championships awesome. at the end of the season. All right. Well, big things in store for this young man. Max Palm, props for you for the forerun. Can't wait to see <laughs> where the rest of your ski career goes. Thanks so much for Thank joining us so here. Thank you so much. We want to have a quick chat here. Freeride World Tour. We're, uh, you know, we're all about keeping things moving. We all want winter to go. So sustainability is the number one thing for us to keep skiing and snowboarding moving forward on the planet today.
My title is the old judge. <laughs> All right, so keeping things in mind, there's sustainability. We got to keep it going. We need skiing to skiing and snowboarding. We need winter. And that's up to you and you and me and all of us to do that together. I'd like to welcome to the booth with me Bertie Deneville. Bertie was one of the judges here at stop number one on the Freeride World Tour. Bertie, first of all, overall take on the event today. Well, we had a great show. The snow conditions were tough, so really a lot of respect for these athletes. What they could show us in these conditions was amazing. So as a judge, we are in the best seat to see that show, and we enjoyed it. Yeah, well, I certainly enjoyed it from here. Hopefully you guys all enjoyed it from your spots all over the world. I want to get into some specifics here. The snowboard men's field, stacked field. The riding we saw was incredible. We're gonna take a look here at Cody Bramwell's run. Can you run us through the way you guys judged this and where, where, the, where the kind of points came from? Yeah, so he started from the start one, so it's steeper and more technical to approach uh, his first jump. Uh, it was a tight decision between first and second place, but part of that decision came from choosing the more technical line to access that backflip, which was perfectly stomped when the rider who got in second place had a couple hands down that backflip. Here there's no hesitation, nice grab, although that was easier than, than whoever got in second place. And we love that last air where he actually popped before the ski tracks this jump there. So it took a much bigger jump of that finish line. But second rider had the nice triple, so it was a close call, and uh, we discussed and basically did the technical ride into the first backflip, and the perfect landing made the difference and gave Cody the win. Yeah, I mean, you guys saw it for yourself. It, 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 these points of difference, and I wanted to have a quick chat about that because it was really tight between Blake and, and Cody, and the differences are pretty subtle. Yes, they are. And, you know, it's also sometimes the, the judge's feeling. So it's not per perfect science there. So some had a feeling that the, the, the really technical, flowy bottom of Blake was great and could have beaten uh, uh, Cody, even though the backflip was not perfect. And in the end, start one with a bit more riding and a bit more technical, approaching that backflip helped Cody's uh, score as well. So, but it was a close goal. We had to talk it through and could have gone either way. Well, it was a tough day to be a judge. I, I, might, I gotta say, I much prefer my seat here in the commentary booth because you, had, you guys had your work cut out for you. Thanks so much for taking the time to run us through that, Bertie. It's fascinating always to see what the judges are seeing and how the points are allocated. We're gonna head down to the finish area to do some podium celebration ceremony. First stop on the Freeride World Tour for 2021. Let's take it down to Neil Williman in the finish with our champions. Uh, I am Neil Willeman here in the finish area now. Thank you for joining us here today for the competition. We are going to keep this short and sweet. Let's start with the ski woman, the first category to come out of the gate today. And I hope that all the podium getters are here in the finish area with me. We're keeping it socially distanced and Corona safe with our masks on, but let's get the podium winners up on the podium. And the first one, the third place, coming out of Switzerland on a return from injury, it's Maud Bess. Go. There you go. Welcome back to the podium, Maud. After your second in Cooper a couple of years ago, and now back here after injury. It's awesome to have you back. Congratulations. All right, moving right on up, right on up to the second place. Another sick run today, really high level in the women's ski category. And coming out of France, it is Juliette Wilman. Yeah. But today, there was only going to be one winner, 
We're going to hand out all three medals at the same time once this girl is up on the top of the podium with one of the most amazing backflips I have seen on the Freeride World Tour in the women's ski category. It is none other than the Norwegian peak performance rider, Hedvig Vessel! <laughs> Yoo-hoo! <laughs> We're organized here on the Freeride Wheel Tour. We have slots in the podium now so the riders can hold their skis and their medals at the same time. Putting them on themselves keeps ourselves corona safe so that Hedwig Vessel can lift up the winner of the Freeride Wheel Tour stop here in 2021. Andorra, congratulations! Yip, 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 yip. <laughs> They're smiling, I promise, even if you can't see. Congratulations, girls. Here comes the champagne. <laughs> Shake it like a polo ride. <laughs> Shake it, shake it, shake it, drink it. <laughs> Champagne only for the winner today. <laughs> sure, share it in the glasses later. Congratulations again, girls. Big ups pulling off the first stop of the Freeride World Tour. Welcome back to the top. All right. Going straight into the skiing men, the second category of the day to run. Wow, it was a crazy show today. And only one Kiwi was able to make it out of the many that were qualified. Stuff has been tough, but this guy holding it down for New Zealand, pretty proud, you're gonna say, Blake Marshall! <laughs> yeah, buddy. <laughs> Many people have had trouble problems, and this guy today skiing on borrowed gear. Nice. <laughs> Is it Hedvig Ski? No, no, no. Oh, cool. The Andorra crowd holding it down for us. Mal Oliver, get up on here. First ever comp, real World Tour rookie out of France, second on the Freeride World Tour, and your first ever stop here in Andorra, Odino Arcalis 2021. Woo! <laughs> but today, it was none other than the rookie out of North America winning the tour stop here in his first ever competition after winning the North American tour in the FWQ last year. Get on up here, Ross Tester! What a show, rookies on top, so good to see. Fresh new talent coming up and through. Congratulations! Yeah team, don't think it's gonna be the last time on the podium for you boys. You can swap that champagne for the winner's trophy. <laughs> it's a French champagne, so it's a French man on the podium. <laughs> Victory never tasted so sweet. Congrats, boys. Yeah. All right, all right. The next category was the snowboard woman also putting on a super sick show today. And another rookie on the podium out of North America after winning North American Tour last season, it is Katie Anderson! <laughs> Fighting away here through the qualifying tour, tying for first twice, and now in her first FWT comp, she is on the podium. Congratulations, Katie. Second place, another American, also having super strange travel worries, 
getting here at the last minute and getting on the podium again. It is Erika Vikanda. You, you, you. What's up? <laughs> Freaking hyped. All right, and in first place today, no stranger to the top of the podium, straight from natural selection to here, it is Marion Erti. You. You, you, you. <laughs> Just experimenting with the new technology. <laughs> Congratulations, Marion, Erica, and Katie. You, you, you. <laughs> it's tough at the top. Congratulations, girls. Here comes your champagne. Yeah, I said your name wrong. I said the drink wrong too. Do what I want. <laughs> champagne. Congratulations, girls. You. Yes, I can. Can you take it, please? Yes, you can. <laughs> all right, all right. So the last category of today, and damn, wasn't it a heavy hitting one? The guy's snowboard stacked field did not disappoint in the slightest. So many heavy hitting, so many big backflips on snowboards. What a pleasure to watch. Let's get them up here. In third place, the defending champion, Niels Mennick. You. Yeah, buddy. No snowboard with him today because he didn't have his own snowboard. He's all borrowed gear. Those are actually my pants. So good work, man, on all borrowed equipment. Third place, first podium of the season. Big ups. But in second place, a really promising rookie after winning the FWQ series in North America last season, Straight onto the world tour like his brother before. It is Blake Muller. You. So dope, dude. <laughs> and another almost rookie. Second season on the FWT. First season riding for Gross Britannian. It is Cody Bramwell. Yeah, buddy. The Brit with the Kiwi accent, they called me. The Brit with the Swedish accent on top of the podium today. Congratulations, boys. Let's see that winning trophy lifted high in the air, just like those backies. Yee-hoo! Swap you for some champagne for your winner's trophy. And you're going to have to stick around as well because we've got one more thing for you and the three other competition winners. <laughs> First timer <laughs> gets called out by the vet. <laughs> Not the last timer. Cody Bramwell, congrats. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> cool. Man, congratulations again, boys. But Cody, I'm going to get you to stick around. I'm going to get you to stand straight there where you just were. And I'm going to call the other three winners up. Hedvig Vessel, Ross Tester, and Marian RT. Come grab your golden bibs. Golden bibs, golden tickets. Get back on up here. It's raw gold. It's gold ore. <laughs> Congratulations again to the team, to the crew, for the organization for pulling off this event against all odds. 
for Ordeno Akalis for having us here in Andorra. It's such a pleasure. Always happy to be back here. And always hilarious to watch athletes trying to put bibs on over other bibs with gloves on and hoods and all the ski gear that makes that kind of thing hilariously difficult. Congratulations again to the gold medal winners today. The golden bib holders today. Woo, 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 woo. Thanks for tuning in back to Derek in the commentary booth to wrap this thing up. Thank you everyone for tuning in. What a day. All right, a Norwegian, a Brit Swede, a French person, and an American are three, ca four category leaders coming out of stop number one on the Free Ride World Tour. What a, what a show we had, 2021. It's got its challenges, but we are pulling it off, and we had a great event here. Huge thanks to Ordino Arcalis, to the people of Andorra, the locals, the volunteers everybody involved in pulling this thing off. It was an absolute fine-tuned machine and everything went beautifully. Massive props to the riders, to all your families back home, all the friends, fans watching. We had a great time here. We hope you had a great time out there. We've got some news for you. We have a big storm coming Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Wind, snow, all kinds of stuff. We're looking at basically the classic free ride, free ride world tour reset. And we're going to be shooting to do another comp here in Ordino Arcalis sometime early next week. Stick around to our social channels, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, freeridewordtour.com. We will keep you posted. Thanks for watching if you tuned in on Fuel TV. Freeride World Tour top number one is in the books. We'll catch you next time. Thank you.